Her life was a nightmare. She caught her boyfriend with another girl. And in the pub where the girl worked part-time, there were always some idiots. And then one day she got drunk and on the way home had an accident that ended her life. And opening her eyes, she turned into a furry monster. The girl looked into her room and introduced herself as her maid. She said that the mistress of this estate lived in this room. And now she is here, this furry creature. But aren't princesses usually beautiful? What if they call me a fraud for looking like this? I'm probably cursed. These were the girl's thoughts. The girl cried from resentment and misunderstanding why she was the one. If we were to be reborn, it would be into a normal body, not a hairy monster. The maid was afraid to enter the room of the monster girl. The maid asked if she was not Mistress Alexa. The girl with the fur said that she needed to think. The girl with the hairy body asked the maid to help her explain everything, because she doesn't quite understand what's happening to her, and it's as if her mind has become clouded. The maid came closer and said that the girl was probably so shocked by Mrs. Ariel's visit. This is the elder sister and princess of this country. A few days ago, she visited you. And since then, you were very sad, constantly crying in your room. The maid continued. Sister is a princess? Why is my sister a princess and I'm just Alexa? Really, I can't be a princess just because of my appearance? The girl with fur asked with offense. The girl only understood that she had become a monster and was a princess who was not even recognized. And she asked the maid to continue explaining. You, Alexandra de Pelagian Dwight, second princess of the kingdom of Felipe. You are the daughter of Camilla's concubine, who died when you were six years old. And at the age of seven, when you were at the Conetti estate, you were cursed. You drove away a witch who asked to come in on a rainy day for which you were cursed, she said. Although I heard that you were very, very beautiful. Everyone said that you are the second beauty after Mrs. Ariel, the maid continued. The girl with the fur asked how old she was now. The maid was surprised that the girl did not remember this either, and she replied that she was 18 now. The maid added that usually girls at this age make their debut in society, but she had a special case. But on the other hand, she is already engaged. The girl was dumbfounded. Engaged? With whom? Her fiancé turned out to be the Marquis Herman of Bedford, commander of the Royal Army. The maid said that it is so beautiful that it is called the Flower of the Empire. And the maid said that this was the most eligible bachelor in the empire. Then the girl asked why he should marry her. The maid replied that it seemed to be under contract. But the engagement will most likely be called off. Everyone knows that Princess Ariel and the Duke are dating and that he hates you, the maid admitted. She also said that the engagement took place only because of her, because Alexandra was in love with this Duke. So much so that she even made a deal with her father, the king. You are very strong. And you said that you would destroy all the enemies of the kingdom. You are even called the Guard of Death. In the last war with the Ethel Empire, we would definitely have lost if it weren't for you. Therefore, we are all very grateful to you. If it weren't for you, we would have already been swallowed up by that empire. But you know, some people call you all sorts of offensive words behind your back. For example, a monster, a dirty washcloth, and even a depraved stalker of men, the maid admitted to her. The girl was surprised that this was all about her, 18 years old. She blamed herself for her bad luck. After all, who else would be lucky enough to be in a situation like her? Monster, princess, and stalker. At first, the girl felt sorry for herself, and then she decided that she couldn't live like that. She needs to find benefit from this situation and survive, no matter what. For several days, Alexa lived with different thoughts and got used to her new body. But one day... She decided that she needed to pull herself together and change her life. Lily, I have a favor to ask, she said to the maid. And after a while, the maid brought her a sugar liquid as she asked. Lily didn't understand why this was needed. Alexa showed her and said, Look, I will apply this liquid to my hand and sharply tear off what is stuck. Lily was shocked that her mistress was not in pain at all. The girl explained to the maid that she should do the same to her, but only quickly and then it would not hurt her so much. And after a few hours of endless pain, everything was ready. Now she looked human, but there was still work to be done on her hair. The girl thought, by the way, this Alexa has a pretty good appearance. Although my body is not very good yet, you can already tell from my face that I am a person, she reasoned, looking at herself in the mirror. Maid Lily couldn't believe her eyes. Mistress Alexa, how did you manage to do this? It's magic? I didn't even know that you could remove fur this way. 
Lily admired her. Alexa ordered her to gather all the workers. When Lady Alexandra came out to her workers, she was surprised that there were so few workers. The girl thought that since she was a princess, she was supposed to have many servants. The workers, looking at her, began to discuss that it was impossible for the hairy monster to turn into a beauty, and that this was not the real Alexa. Alexandra greeted all the workers and said that she had gathered them all to shed light on the current situation. First of all, she called the cook to her. The girl was indignant and said, It seems to me that my dishes are too fatty, don't you think? To this, the cook replied that Mrs. Ariel advised to do so. Alexa thought this was suspicious and needed to be changed. The cook began to argue with her that this menu was developed especially for her by Princess Ariel. Always this Ariel. Why are her words more important to them than the words of the mistress? It's time to teach them a lesson and show them who's boss. Alexa decided. And she turned to her workers. Listen carefully, your mistress is me. If I hear any objections again, I won't just forgive it. The girl thought that monsters also had their advantages and told the servants that now she would command what and how they should do. And after the cook, she continued talking with her personal hairdresser, a girl named Jen. While she was combing her hair, Alexa opened up. She admitted that although she looks like a monster, in fact, she is just a girl of 18 years old. Although before her death, she was 24. Alexa told hairdresser Gina that she wanted people to see her as a person and not a monster, at least those who are close to her. Gina and Lily burst into tears and apologized for hurting her with their words earlier. The girl thought that she did not want to upset them so much, so she told them that she just wanted them to do their jobs well. Then they promised to make her Princess Alexa, the most beautiful girl in the kingdom. And from that day on, Alexandra played sports and took care of herself every day. She learned how to manage the estate and studied the financial side of the issue. Three months passed like this. When Alexa sorted through the paperwork, she found out that the cost of groceries was too incredible. It was as if someone was trying to destroy Alexa's health and financial condition with this huge expenditure on food. Ariel, what exactly are you trying to achieve? She asked mentally. Dear Princess Ariel, I couldn't stand aside and not notice such changes in Mrs. Alex. She got rid of all the fur and refused the food offered. Has her curse really disappeared? I'm too worried about her. Please get to the estate as quickly as possible and check its condition. Have a good trip. Hurton and Willow. Princess Ariel read the letter and ordered the servants to prepare the carriage. At this time, Alexa was fighting with a knight with swords. He was very tired and did not want to continue. Alexa was surprised that the knight got tired so quickly. The guy said that he could no longer continue training because he was not a man and she was a monster. The girl thought that he needed to be taught a lesson, so she lightly hit him on the head and the guy fell unconscious. She didn't understand how this was possible. It was as if there was magic, enormous power and magic. Now it was clear why everyone was so afraid of Alex. And the girl decided to test her strength and cut the statue in half. Maid Lily approached the princess and told her that Princess Ariel had come to visit her. Alexa was surprised that her sister had arrived here. The girl did not understand why she was here. After all, she was told that she comes here once every two months. So why now? This is no accident. You need to be careful. Ariel, the first princess, was waiting for her in the living room. Alexa, entering the room, said, Sister, sorry for the wait. She noticed how surprised Ariel was to see her without fur. This was truly hard to believe. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Alexa, the second princess of the kingdom. The girl specially introduced herself. Are you very surprised to see me like this? <laughs> to be honest, this is all an act of magic, Alexa told her older sister. Ariel looked very worried. What? Has she lifted the curse? She heard in her head. Alexa continued that it was quite difficult and long to explain, but the curse disappeared. I'm no longer a monster, but your little sister Alexa, she said. And Ariel, after a pause, asked, How am I supposed to believe that you are the real Alexa? Alexa touched the figurine and cut it with her finger with one touch. Look, sister, only Alexa can do this. Now do you believe me? The girl asked. Yes, you are definitely Alexa. I am so glad. I was so worried that you were constantly sitting in the room and never going out, Ariel said, wiping away her tears. Then Alexa thought that her sister really burst into tears. Anyone who saw it would definitely think that it was really because of me. But she decided not to believe her tears. 
After all, Alexa doesn't yet know how Ariel really feels about her. To win this war, you need to build a defense without suspicion. Don't cry, sister. I'm very happy, too. And I am grateful to you for your feelings. I hope we will do everything together in the future. Alexa said, hugging Ariel tightly. Is this how it will be, little sister? Alexa asked. Ariel reluctantly told her, of course. Then Alexa said, if that's the case, let's go back to the palace. It's been a week since Alexa arrived at the palace with Ariel. The princess constantly makes excuses, saying that she is too busy with business to meet her. Since that day, they have not seen each other at all. The entire royal palace was working hard to prepare for the king's birthday, which would take place in three days. And only Alexa rested, played sports, and thought about whether Ariel would appear at the reception. A maid came into her room and said that the princess had sent her to serve her. She also said that the lady had sent her clothes for the reception that would take place in honor of the king's birthday. And she added that she should choose what she likes. But Alexa, looking at the dresses, thought that they all seemed to be from the last century. And she asked the maid if that was all. Since you came from the village, you most likely do not know that not everything that Princess Ariel has prepared for you is the latest trend of the season. And if you don't understand, then just choose and thank the lady, said the maid Rachel brazenly. Maid Lily was surprised that she spoke so rudely. And Alexa slapped the maid as hard as she could, adding, Well, Rachel, I hope this was enough to remind you of who I am and where you belong. She also asked me to tell all the servants in this palace that they should respect the princesses of their own kingdom. Rachel thought that Princess Alexa truly lived up to her nickname. And what will happen to the palace now after her arrival? The day has arrived for the king's birthday reception. Taylor Jamie admired his work, the elegant dress on Alex. This dress was simply created for you. Then he added that it was much better than those ancient rags that Princess Ariel sent. Alexa thought that this would be enough to piss Ariel off. But since Alexa didn't have money, she told Taylor Jamie, Listen here, I'm from the royal family, but I don't have enough money. But think of it as being able to make a dress for royalty. Consider this a great advancement in your career. Jamie thought that this was a blackmailer, not a princess. But he told her that he was happy to be part of her transformation. It was a dress tailored to her figure and made from the best fabrics. Alexa was informed that everything was ready and she could go into the hall. They announced in the hall, Alexandra de Pelagian Dwight, second princess of the kingdom of Felipe. People in the hall began to whisper, What? Alexa? She is here? And Alexa, in a chic outfit, walked through the entire hall, straight to the king's throne and greeted his majesty. The king could not believe that this was really his daughter Alexa. She was completely covered in fur, just like a monster. The king said she looked beautiful. His majesty asked for silence from the guests in the hall and informed everyone that his daughter and second princess of the kingdom, Alexandra de Pelagian Dwight, had freed herself from a terrible curse. This is the blessing that the goddess Demetria sent to us and a sign showing the bright future of our country. Long live the kingdom of Felipe, said the king, hugging his daughter. Wow, even in this situation, he was able to use his daughter and turn everything in his favor. What an interesting man. Hey, Alexa's life really wasn't sweet, the girl thought. And the new Alexa decided that she needed to repay her for the years of suffering. She told the king that she would go to her sister. He didn't mind, and said he hoped they would become closer. Heading towards her sister, Alexa noticed a man with black eyes and black hair enter the hall. Their gazes crossed. At that moment, someone grabbed her hand. Sister, I apologize for being so urgent. I am your younger brother, Wilhelm. I've heard a lot of news about you. I need to tell you something, the guy said. This is Archduke Belkalon. He's cursed. Thirty years ago, the late king married the devil's daughter to maintain peace in the kingdom. And although she was only half a demon, she was executed for her cruelty and ruthlessness. He is the son of that woman. To be honest, no one is sure that he belongs to royal blood, since black eyes and black hair indicate belonging to demons and not to people. Who knows when his devilish part will take over him? The prince finished. Alexa thought that they had only met ten minutes ago, and he had already said so many things. It's much easier with him than with Ariel. Apparently he has an inferiority complex because of the Archduke. It could be concluded that her father, the king, needs Alexa only for political purposes. The younger brother is busy with his fantasies and suspicions, which means the biggest problem remains. 
Ariel, who is hiding her true identity. Wilhelm, if you already said hello, can I pick up Alexa? Ariel asked. Alexa turned and sweetly asked her, What did you want, little sister? She replied that she needed to introduce her to many people. Ariel introduced her sister to her friends and they began to shamelessly discuss her right in front of her. Alexa felt like she was a monkey at the zoo. Ariel made a remark to her friends that they shouldn't discuss her sister like that. After all, the word peculiar can only describe the lower strata of society, isn't it? Princess Ariel asked her friends. Now everything became clear to Alex. Ariel wants to make her sister look bad and make all the aristocrats laugh at her. Since I'm a monkey in this zoo, all I need to do is destroy my cage and escape, Alexa decided, and she poured a glass of wine on the head of one of her friends. That girl was indignant that the dress was very expensive, and her designer sat on it for several hours. Alexa apologized, but then added something else. But you don't want to say that without this dress, you are an ordinary simpleton inside? Without this dress, who are you? Alexa asked, taking her chin. Alexa swung her hand and the girl closed her eyes, and the princess tore off her dress, tearing it below the knees and throwing a piece of fabric on the floor. Her legs became visible. But I, even without this peculiar dress, still have my strength and my name as the second princess of the kingdom of Philippe, Alexa de Pelagian Dwight, she said. Alexa thought that they came here for a show like this anyway. This means that they will now have to choose her side or someone else's. Princess Alexa told the girl to send the bill for the dress to the palace, and she would repay her with interest. The girl asked her to stop, but Ariel, as Alexa expected, does not openly express her position but prefers to remain on the sidelines. It's like a game of chess. She gathers allies and is about to attack, and if Alexa cannot defend herself, she will be eliminated from the game. While the princess was thinking, someone shouted, Princess, Marquis of Bedford. Marquis Herman Bedford, is that him? The groom Alexa couldn't live without? Well, here we are, the girl thought. Ariel noticed Bedford and rushed towards him. Princess Ariel, will you allow me to steal the last dance? The Marquis asked her. The princess replied that she would love to, but Alexa is here. The girlfriends said that they were a wonderful couple, no matter what anyone said. Alexa thought it was true. I stole the groom whom your sister loved so much. Now the relationship between you is clear. If I'm going to continue to live in this world, I need to protect Alexa, the girl decided. She took a step forward and said, Don't worry, I, Alexa de Pelagian Dwight, today officially dissolve my engagement to the Marquis of Bedford. Ariel and the Marquis did not believe what they heard. Break off the engagement? Is it true? Indeed, Alexa, you... Princess Ariel said in surprise and at the same time gratefully. Alexa answered everyone. You all know that it's the two of them that are so suitable for each other. And since I'm an uninvited guest in the Marquise's heart, wouldn't it be better for me to just leave? Despite all the rumors and criticism, the old Alexa could not let go of the Marquis. Therefore, now everyone was probably very surprised by what was happening. Alexa decided that now it was her turn and asked her sister if she didn't think the same thing. But Ariel was silent, standing next to the Marquis of Bedford. I will take your silence as consent. My engagement to the Marquis of Bedford is officially over, and everyone present here is a witness to this, said Princess Alexa and headed towards the exit. She felt free, but this was only the first step. There is still a whole way ahead. Alexa went out onto the balcony to get some fresh air, as it was stuffy for her in the hall. And the girl was very scared when she saw how high this balcony was above the ground. It's so high here, if I fall, will I die right away? Alexa thought and remembered her death. But I've already died once. If I die here too, will I be transported to another world again? No, I've just started my journey. I can't think about the end, she decided. Then the girl said to herself, pull yourself together, Lee Hanbiel. No, get it together, Alexa. And suddenly she lost her balance and almost fell down but someone's hand grabbed her. The man hugged her and pressed her to him. It was he, Archduke Belcalon. He looked so intently into her eyes. The girl thanked him for saving her and ran into the hall. After catching her breath, she wondered how long he had stood there and watched her. Then Alexa reassured herself with the hope that they would never meet again. After the reception ended, the girl returned to her normal life as a princess of the kingdom. Almost everyone around was discussing the termination of her engagement by the Marquis. They say that Ariel and the Marquis did not even meet after that. 
Princess Ariel did not attend any social events or host receptions. This is what Lily told Alexa. But she didn't care about that. All she cared about now was the Archduke and their first meeting. Alexa thought that she needed to die, and then she would simply move to another world. But in fact, she was so bored sitting idle in her room. A few days later, the hunting competition began. Ariel furtively looked at the Marquis of Bedford and he at her. Alexa finally walked out of her room into the light, and she couldn't believe her eyes when she saw him, Archduke Belcalon. She thought to herself, This can't be. Well, what kind of setup is this? A few days before the start of the competition, the maid Lily told Alexa that the hunting competition would begin soon. This is a traditional event attended by the royal family and aristocrats. It brings together male hunters and the women who support them into one team. And the team that brings the biggest and most expensive loot will be the winner. But if a male hunter does not have a woman to support him, he will be disqualified. And this is such a big taboo that it's not worth mentioning. Lily added that she thought it would be better to expel those who break the rules or behave inappropriately. Alexa thought that this seemed like a very boring event. But she will take part in it. Since Alexa is part of the royal family, she needs to take part in public events. Plus, Lily and Jane had worked hard to prepare her for this day. Lily prepared her a costume like the hunters, just as Alex asked. Alexa found the maids a little annoying, but still she could rely on them. At the event, they again discussed her and her outfit. Oh, Princess Alexa is still very peculiar, or should I say porcupine, said one aristocrat. Alexa turned and prepared for a confrontation. What did you come to brag about? A necklace, a bracelet, or a dress? Didn't the lesson with your friend's wine dress teach you anything? She asked. The girl apologized, and Alexa seemed to experience deja vu. And I thought that it would be better for them to come up with something new. Then, everyone heard the king's greeting. I, King Raphael III, declare the hunting competition open, he said loudly. And so the competition began, and Alexa met him again. Belcalon has been very active lately. With your presence, our event acquires sophistication, said the king to the archduke, who greeted his majesty. The best aristocrats of the kingdom of Philippe have gathered here today. May the goddess Demetria help you win an honest and worthy victory. The winner will receive a sword, a monetary reward, and glorify his name in the name of his family. I ask everyone to prepare, the king commanded. And as Lily said, the male hunters began to choose women who would support them. And when Alexa had already become accustomed to the local atmosphere, she appeared. Alexa, who will you support? asked Princess Ariel. The girl replied that she didn't even know, but she herself thought that she needed to pull herself together in order to prevent herself from being attacked. Alexa asked in response, And you are a sister, who will you support? Although it seems that everyone already knows the answer. But who knows? The human heart is so changeable. Prince William asked his majesty how about the royal family also taking part in the competition. For example, the archduke could try his hand. Alexa was very surprised by this proposal, since she had heard that men of royal blood usually watch the competitions, but do not participate in them. The king replied that this was a great idea, and he added that he always didn't like the fact that the royal family stood on the sidelines. Alexa noticed that the prince was blinded by envy. But the king stubbornly does not pay any attention to this. Is it possible that the damned archduke will also take part in the competition? But no one will support him. The archduke is said to have fire magic. Rumor has it that his hands were even tied to prevent him from burning anyone alive. And what else can you expect from a person with such appearance? They said. Were their hands tied so that he wouldn't burn anyone? Isn't this just torture? Alexa thought. Even though she wanted to avoid him as much as possible, she couldn't pretend she didn't hear it. During all this time, the hunters have already chosen their assistants, and only the Marquis of Bedford and the Archduke Belcalon were left without a couple. Alexa said that she had finished her preparations and was ready to go. Why did you choose me as your partner? I thought you hated me, the guy asked. A few hours before, a pair was chosen for the remaining two participants. First, they announced, who wants to become a couple for the Marquis of Belford Randall Harmon? The two girls raised their hands, but everyone was staring at Alexa. She understood what they needed, but she was not going to participate in it. Lord Belford and Lady Cecil are partners, the guy announced. Alexa did not believe that his partner was not Ariel. 
Ariel looked at her sister, who was perplexed, and smiled. That's right, I'm not the only one who hides her true feelings, Alexa thought. Then it was announced who wanted to become a couple for the Archduke of Belkalon, Dwight Estar. But no one wanted to be his partner. Who is crazy enough to accompany him? His assistant will be punished with a barrage of fire, Alexa heard. And she stepped forward and said, Alexa de Pelagian Dwight, I want to be Archduke Belkalon's partner. The girl wanted her father and sister to be surprised. The king said that this was not the time or place for jokes and demanded that she apologize to the Archduke. Alexa told her father that she was not joking. The girl swore on the name of Dwight that she was sincere, although she herself did not understand why she was doing this. Perhaps it was all because she saw herself in the eyes of the Archduke, in the eyes of the shunned, rejected, and ridiculed by everyone. She understood his role, which is why she gave him her hand. The younger brother called Alexa, but she did not respond. Then the organizer asked the Archduke if he accepted Alexa de Pelagian Dwight as his partner. Alexa extended her hand to him and smiled. She wanted him to agree, because if he refuses her, he will be tortured. Belkalon touched Alexa's hand and said that he accepted her. Now Alexa has decided to take responsibility for him. After the king announced the start of the competition, all teams dispersed to prepare for the hunt. Only Alexa was not left alone. Ariel and her friends approached her. This has become quite a frequent and annoying occurrence. They asked her whether she really no longer felt anything for Sir Belford. Alexa replied that she didn't feel anything for him at all from the beginning. What happened between them was a banal calculation on her part. My sister, the first princess, could not decide on marriage so quickly. So I was engaged to the Marquis instead of her. I saved it for Ariel, Alexa said, smiling. Then the girl told them that it was time for her to prepare for the hunt and wanted to leave, but Ariel grabbed her hand and asked why she didn't choose Belford. That's what I have to ask, Ariel. Why didn't you choose Belford? Doesn't it look like you didn't have feelings for him? Alexa asked. Answer first, why did you choose this black-eyed one? Ariel asked in response. Alexa asked why not. Ariel replied that he was cursed. So what? You know that I'm a monster myself, Alexa said. If you were a monster, I would not have returned you to the palace. Princess Ariel answered her sister. Archduke Belkalon approached Alexa. They stood silent for a long time looking at each other. Then the guy said, Someone is forced to be near me. Alexa realized that he was talking about her and replied, I'm not forced, and now I'm not forced either. This man is used to being surrounded by hatred. The girl asked why he was avoiding her. Belkalon turned around and went to the horse, saying that he needed to ride. Alexa asked permission to support him and gave him a scarf. She wanted to tie it around his arm but couldn't wrap the scarf around his bulging muscles. Then the girl asked permission and tied a scarf over her partner's bow. The guy thanked her and asked if she always does this to other people. Alexa didn't understand what he was talking about, and the Archduke thanked her, got on his horse, and rode away. The girl thought that according to rumors he was a cruel demon, but he looked quite sweet and innocent and from now on, hunting in competitions becomes enjoyable for her. Alexa was riding a horse. Her mood was lifted thanks to today's sun and fresh breeze. Instead of a tight dress, she put on comfortable pants and felt great. The girl remembered the award in this competition. She didn't need a sword or money, but she would like to see the shock on the king's face. Alexa, happy, climbed high into the tree. From there, she saw three guys and accidentally overheard their conversation. You assembled the traps correctly, right? Asked one guy. The second replied that he had asked the most experienced blacksmith. Are you sure that the Duke will pass here, Lord Hefanio? I don't think it will be so easy to get rid of him, the guy said. Another asked what would happen if someone else got caught. A third said it would be interesting to see as he was disappointed no one was punished this year. Another guy said that the next person will get caught. Before he could finish speaking, Alexa jumped down on them from a tree and kicked them in flight. I just heard something very interesting. Would anyone like to explain? She said. The guys were very surprised and one of them said, P. Princess, Lord Evenza, Lord Halcyon, and Lord Helfanio. Alexa listed them. You know very well who the Duke is paired with, don't you? She asked. I'm warning you, even if you're a princess, you won't get away with this. One guy replied. My father, Count Manuela, will not tolerate this, he added. Alexa realized that he and the girl with the wine dress were relatives, and their similarities don't stop at appearances. 
Alexa went in search of the Archduke. She hoped that she had gone in the right direction and that he had not fallen into a trap. The guys told her that they had sent a spy. The servant accompanying Belkalon today is actually a spy. The girl prayed that everything would be fine with the Duke. She herself did not understand her thoughts. Why am I so worried about him? I don't even really know him, so why does he bother me so much? It's like I like him. Alexa thought to herself, No, I just don't want to put my partner in danger. Yes, exactly. This is my sense of duty, she convinced herself. Alexa felt a little rested and set out on her search with renewed vigor. But suddenly she realized that she had entered a swamp. The girl blamed herself for the fact that she should have found the trap and not fallen into it. What is the point of rebirth anyway? Not only am I an outcast, but I'm also unlucky, she thought. An hour later, Alexa could no longer move being chest deep in the swamp. She thought that until now she had overcome the most terrible situations on her own. The girl noticed someone and called for help. The guy came closer and it turned out that it was Marcus, her ex-fiancé. Alexa was upset that it was him. Alexa asked him for help, but he turned away and walked away. I know you don't love me, but if you just leave me here, you won't be forgiven. No matter how hard people try not to mess with me, it doesn't change the fact that my last name is Dwight, she shouted after him. He asked her to wait, and he himself turned away and cut the green reed rope with his blade, and the swamp gradually began to leave Alexa's body. She didn't understand how he did it. The guy said it was just regular soil magic, and if you destroy the source, the magic will dissipate. Simple magic did not work here, so they mixed several spells. Marcus held out his hand to Alexa and told her to grab it, but she did not give her hand, then he said, If you get pulled in even more, then you will have a very long time to get out of here. What is he up to? He doesn't like touching Alexa, the girl thought and said that she would wait for someone else. Then the Marquis pulled her out of the swamp with his own hands. Belford lifted Alexa high off the ground, holding her waist with his hands. The girl asked him to lower her to the ground and added that this help was unnecessary. Princess, did something happen? asked Archduke Belcalon, making his way through the bushes towards them. Alexa rushed to him, asking if he was okay. I was worried. Of course, as your partner, Alexa admitted to him. Then she asked where the person accompanying him had gone. Belford didn't take his eyes off them. Belcalon replied that he had sent him on business and asked how the princess knew about this. Alexa smiled and replied that she could find out about everything. The girl added that this must be her partner's intuition. After all, it's impossible for something to happen even to one of the couple. It seemed to the Duke that something had happened to the princess. Belcalon looked at Belford and Alexa with suspicion and jealousy. The girl said that she fell into a trap prepared by other participants, and the Marcus saved her. As the princess's partner, I thank you, the Duke said to the Marquis. This is not worth your thanks, Belford answered him. Then Alexa remembered that she did not thank Marcus for saving her and told him, Marquis Belford, thank you for helping me. Belcalon looked at them with a jealous gaze. Princess, there was a small stream near the road I was walking along. You can wash there, said the Archduke. Alexa would love to do this now that she's been in the swamp. Therefore, she followed the Duke, wishing the Marquis a successful hunt. After all, one way or another, he helped her, so she should be grateful to him. While Alexa was bathing in the stream, the Duke sat next to her on a stone. He asked if she was injured. The girl replied that she was fine, only she had lost her bow. Alexa noticed how her arrow floated away from her with the current. Belkalin also bent down for the arrow, just like her, and they fell into the water together. Alexa lay on top and looked into his eyes. The girl apologized to the Duke for her clumsiness. Even though he said that everything was fine, Alexa blamed herself for always doing something strange in front of the Duke. And Alexa caught herself thinking that she wanted to show him only the good side. She didn't want misunderstandings to build up between them. Therefore, Alexa said, Duke, I want to tell you something. Is that so? Speak. At the first meeting, you looked like that because you were too embarrassed, he replied. There are a lot of people who don't like me, and facing this face to face is not very pleasant. It may be awkward for the princess, but I don't care, the Duke admitted. He added that it is normal for people to feel embarrassed. Alexa smiled at him and said, thank you. She thought it was a funny consolation from a damned man to a monster. If I look closely at you, I can't look away, 
Alexa admitted to the Duke with wet hair, and he asked if she hadn't recently called him Belkalon. Alexa said, Sorry about that, I was just surprised and glad to see the Duke, so... Belkalon. The Duke replied that it sounded a little better that way. The girl thought that he would draw a line between them, but he allowed her to call himself by name. Then she decided that it would be fair if he called her by name. Alexa extended her hand to the Duke and said, smiling, Hold on, Belkalon, you're not going to sit in the water all day, are you? Of course not, Alexa, he answered and took her hand. The princess noticed that he smiled slightly and she was very surprised. Belkalon admitted that his clothes were very wet, and it will take a long time for it to dry. Alexa turned away and said that he shouldn't be embarrassed by her and dry his clothes. She decided that for the sake of it she could wait. But the girl turned around, and she noticed that his clothes were already dry. Alexa asked if he could use magic. Belkalon replied that he could, since the blood of demons flows in him. The Duke admitted that he specifically did not want to tell this. After all, by saying this, he will only arouse unnecessary suspicion. Loneliness and fatigue were hidden behind his eyes. Where there was not a single emotion left, there were only traces of countless condemnations and mistrust. At the same time, they were so similar and different. Princess Alexa continuously fought to change, and the Duke was afraid of change and continued to kill himself. Both she and he are already precious in themselves. Belkalon admitted to the girl that today is such a good day that it's blinding. Alexa apologized for the fact that because of her, the hunt was not a success at all. The Duke replied that it was enough that they were both unharmed. The princess really wanted to see the king's face after her victory, but she sincerely thanked the Duke for his partnership. As she chatted with him little by little, she realized that he was easier to talk to than she thought. Contrary to expectations, he turned out to be a talented storyteller and easily talked on any topic. He didn't believe in stereotypes about monsters and demons, and it seems he became her good friend. Alexa was admiring Belkalon, when suddenly she noticed something green flying straight at him. Alexa pushed the duke aside and cut the green creature in half. Belkalon shot his bow at the second creature and said, Watch out, Alexa, these are monsters. The girl noticed that the monsters continued to arrive and called the duke to hide in the forest. He replied that there were a lot more of them than they thought, so Alexa had to leave. The princess said that she would go to the main hall to get the knights. Belkalon called his horse and gave Alexa his bow. She thanked him for everything. Alexa mounted her horse and said goodbye. Belkalon, take care of yourself. I'll be back soon. The guy looked after her and knew that she would return. My partner, Alexa? She is a very strong person, and it's not because she's a monster. She is strong in heart and soul, and therefore she will definitely return, he thought. Take them away from the squads. We need to carry away the wounded. Don't run. Fight. These are just monsters. Marquis Bedford shouted to the soldiers, killing the green monsters. Find his majesty. We need reinforcements, shouted Garion, vice captain of the royal knights. The knight reported that his majesty immediately left the hunting grounds. Even the arrows didn't take the monsters, and Garion said to the Marquis, Captain, we urgently need to evacuate. Marcus understood that Garion was right. This battle was pointless. But he must do something for the sake of the soldiers who follow him. Marcus wondered what he should do and did not notice the monster that attacked him from behind. Garion shouted but did not have time to do anything. Suddenly, someone's arrow split the monster in half and they saw Alexa on a horse. All the soldiers turned to look at her. No one could believe that she was again on the battlefield, as she had once been in the guise of a monster. Alexa got off her horse and demanded attention. First, she thanked the knights. I am grateful to you for your desire to fight to the end, but I can't say that the tactics you chose are correct, said Alexa. Everyone looked at her in bewilderment. Garion said that the knights are doing everything in their power, and it is not the fault of any tactics. Belford calmed him down and offered to listen to the princess. Alexa said that she understood the principle by which monsters attack and asked to transfer command to her. Captain Marcus asked how he could give her the soldiers. Marquis, even if we throw them away, they will come and come without end. They move according to the same pattern, from east to west and vice versa, thereby creating such chaos. More and more of them arrive and they can group together, becoming one huge monster. We don't need to just stand and fight back. It is better to divide into two groups, Western and Eastern. This is how we will stop the monsters. Alexa shared her plan. 
even with the power of a monster, she remained a student of Li Han Biel. Marquis of Bedford, I see that you are having difficulty making a decision and therefore, as commander-in-chief of the royal army, I order you to regroup, she shouted. All knights follow the orders of the commander-in-chief. The first and second squads go west, the third and fourth squad go east, the fifth squad follow me, Belford shouted. Alexa held her sword out in front of her and shouted, You don't fight to protect the royal family, you fight to protect those you love. And the knights followed her. During the monster invasion, King Felipe fled the battlefield. Raphael III was not much different from other kings. Even though he was third in line to the throne, he became king through internecine war. First Prince Alexis and Second Prince Franz both died in the struggle for the throne. And just like that, Raphael became a ruler. But it's impossible to say that this place suited him. The affairs of the nobles were handled by Chancellor Ivankar. The royal knights defended the kingdom from invasion. And as a result of the incompetence of Raphael III, doubts arose regarding the next candidate for the throne. Prince Wilhelm is a representative of royal blood, and Archduke Belkalon is a bearer of devilish blood. There were many rumors that they did not get along with each other. But Alexa was different from her ordinary relatives. She has the strength of an archduke and the courage to lead the knights forward. She was once a monster, but now she leads everyone forward. It is Alexa who deserves the royal crown like no other. Garion thought as he watched her lead the knights and admired her. Suddenly, Archduke Belkalon appeared and killed the huge monster. The soldiers discussed his fighting skills. At that moment, Alexa was distracted, and a huge monster appeared behind her. Belkalon killed him and thus saved her from death. Are you okay, princess? He asked. Alexa headed towards him, but the Marquis intercepted her and asked, How are you? Alexa was very annoyed by his sudden concern. The soldiers shouted, Hooray, we defeated the monsters! Hooray for the commander-in-chief! Hooray for Captain Belford! Princess Alexa was upset. After all, although Belkalon came later, he did much more. And all the laurels will go to the Marquise. She knew they wouldn't acknowledge his help. It seems to me that the other person should receive gratitude. What does saving your life mean to you? The princess shouted. The soldiers began to discuss among themselves that she was right. If it weren't for the Archduke, they would have been swept away and everyone would have died. But this way they were able to defend themselves. Hooray for Archduke Belkalon! Long life to Archduke Belkalon! The knights shouted. Belkalon told the girl she shouldn't have done that. Alexa came closer to the Duke and said, smiling, No, I don't think so, Belkalon. Garion approached them and said, Princess, since we are done here, you need to return to the palace. Alexa looked at Belford and said she wasn't going back. They rode together on a horse and Belkalon asked Alexa why she left with him. After all, she could have stayed and celebrated the victory with all the soldiers. Alexa's heart was pounding wildly from the fact that she was sitting on a horse with him. The girl replied that even though they won, how many lives were lost. And therefore she sees no reason for joy. But in fact, she ran away because she did not have the courage to face the truth. The truth of Pyrrhic victory. Mr. Belkalon, is this Princess Alexa? Hello, said the boy who met them. It was Mail, the Archduke's servant. Belkalon asked why he was there. Mail replied that Solovan had sent him. Were you and the princess on a date? The boy asked. The Duke apologized to Alexa for the fact that this servant had no manners at all. Alexa replied that everything is fine, because the boy is still small and very cute, so she forgives him. Suddenly, Mail said that the duke smelled strange. The princess thought that it might be from the blood of monsters. Mail found the bag by the unpleasant smell. Alexa asked if he knew what it was. Mail answered, yes. This bag contains a mixture of herbs that attract monsters. They create a strong aroma that monsters can smell from kilometers away. And if a person has it, he'll definitely be in trouble, the guy said. Felicalon, why do you have it? Alexa asked. But the Duke was silent, then Alexa asked how she could trust a man who was up to something behind her back. Alexa believed that he himself was like a chest of secrets. Just when it seemed to her that they were getting closer, this pops up. But he reminded her of her old self. Archduke, it doesn't matter, you can continue to be silent. The conversation is over, goodbye, Alexa said and turned to leave. Belkalon grabbed her hand. I'll tell you, but promise that you won't hold a grudge against me said the duke, and Belkalon admitted that he did this because he was worried about her safety.
If you hadn't chosen me as your hunting partner and I hadn't taken part in it, then who would you be with, he asked, holding Alexa's hand. It was a stupid but honest answer. Everything fell into place. She truly saw her old self, Lee Hanbeal, in him. A girl who went out of her way for someone's love. Belkalan, I don't want you to get hurt. Of course, it's strange to say this. We met recently, but you are important to me. This is from the bottom of my heart, admitted Alexa. The Duke was surprised by her confession and remained silent. Then, Alexa asked him to accompany her to the castle, again calling him Belkalon and not the Archduke, which meant her forgiveness. The girl walked around the garden and thought, Two weeks have already passed since she came into this world. It looks like she will never return to her world. And yet she was happy here. You will no longer have to experience problems with work, rush while eating, or be an outcast because of your poverty. I'm just afraid that this will all turn out to be a dream. What if the real Alexa returns? What if she forces me to return everything back? The girl was afraid. No, I did all this on my own. You missed your chance, Alexa. I don't care if they call me a monster. Now it's me, she decided. Suddenly, Lily ran into the garden and called Alexa. She told the princess that she had news. Remember what you asked me? I'm talking about the seller of bags of herbs. Lily found out that he is a traveling merchant and he is already in another empire since he left Felipe. And now it won't be easy to find him, because he could be anywhere. Then Lily reported that the king had sent another person to her. The maid said that the princess needed to rest, but he was very insistent. Alexa understood why the king called her. The king's escape from a hunting competition caused popular unrest. Some people are going to overthrow the king, and they will not miss this opportunity. Marquis Sergei, Head of the aristocracy supported Alexa as commander-in-chief of Felipe's army. And since it is connected with this situation, the king cannot help but pay attention to it. Alexa had already managed to avoid this meeting five or six times, but she was already starting to get tired of it. And the princess decided to confront the king. When Alexa entered the hall to his majesty, her father rushed to her and said how he had not seen her for a long time. And he even asked how she was feeling. She was greeted by Duke Manuel and Count Gerard Abigail. Alexa responded to their greetings. Really, I have met two of the most loyal people to the state. The king told his daughter that thanks to her, they managed to protect the kingdom. Alexa replied that this was also a great merit of Archduke Belcalon. Then she added, Just for the honor of the royal family you ran away crying? Or have you found refuge? Of course now it doesn't matter at all. The king simply replied, I am certainly honorable to the Archduke. Then Alexa said that this was enough and asked her father to get to the point of the matter for which he called her. Then the king said that monsters had appeared again on the western border. He sent troops there, but to no avail. The lords need help, but no one is able to help them. And the kingdom of Felipe has serious problems. Alexa, you know that you are my last hope. As always, it is your duty to protect the kingdom, the king said, squeezing her hand. The girl thought that his majesty knows how to manipulate people. The old Alexa clearly lacked attention, and she would not be able to resist such words. The king asked his daughter why she was silent, and he added, The Marquis of Belford will be there too, a month, maybe two, and you will be together. Alexa replied, Your majesty, I don't understand why you mention him in our conversation. After all, I have officially broken off my engagement to the Marquise. But her father answered her that she had changed so much lately that the Marquis might change his mind. Therefore, she should not miss the opportunity to establish a relationship with him. Princess Alexa said that she would not follow His Majesty's orders. The king did not understand what was happening and asked if she had any health problems. She replied that she was fine. Then the king ordered her to explain the reason. Alexa was disgusted with this man and said that she had lost her magic. The king's order used to be a great honor to me. I thought I would remain a monster forever. But now I've gotten rid of the curse and I want to truly fall in love, admitted Alexa. The girl began to cry and explained to her father that she was now a normal person, like everyone else, and no longer wanted to see her ex-fiancé. And as a father, he should wish her well. The king again repeated that the Marquis could change his mind. Alexa got angry and shouted, You still don't understand me? I don't want to see him anymore. Alexa asked her father if he hadn't noticed how the Marquis treated her but the king continued to persuade her. The girl shouted that she hated the Marquis with all her heart. Then the king said that this was too much and offered her this option. If she agrees, he will set her up with any aristocrat Felipe. 
if he agrees, of course. Princess Alexa said it wouldn't change her mind. True love must appear suddenly. I will await my fate. Will you support me? She asked her father. After this, the king definitely had no arguments left and agreed with his daughter. Victory was Alexa's. Wait, you can't, said the duke. Alexa answered him. Duke Manuel, why are you interfering in our conversation? But we must protect Felipe's kingdom at all costs, the duke replied. I agree with the duke. You have a personal life, but you can't leave the state, said the count. Alexa thought that these two had been waiting for this moment all their lives. Do you really think that I once betrayed the state? She asked. And Alexa thought to herself that they were mistaken if they thought that she would leave them alone. Shameless, do you have no conscience left at all? While you were sitting in warm rooms, I was fighting a monster on the verge of life and death. You went to ceremonial banquets while I risked my life. The Count said that she has superhuman strength, but Alexa reminded her that she was no longer a monster. The Duke asked the girl to calm down and talk to them. Alexa told him that she only made it from the curse and they were sending her off to war again. And because of this, she will not be able to meet her only betrothed. The Duke replied that she had only done for the state, that she would definitely find herself a worthy person. Do you really think so? So I can choose anyone? Alexa asked. After the Duke's confirmation, she said, Then I choose your son. He performed well in the hunting competitions, so I choose him. Princess Alexa stunned everyone, saying this with a sweet smile on her face. The Duke answered the princess that his son was not good enough for her. Alexa said that it's okay because no one is born great, especially since she liked him. The Count suggested that the princess resolve this issue somehow differently, because these are their personal matters and it all looks rather selfish. Have you ever wondered how dangerous this could be for the kingdom? The princess provides a service to the kingdom. This is incomprehensible. The Count was indignant. You are too arrogant. Are you calling me selfish? Alexa answered him angrily. The king asked them what the problem was. Alexa replied that the problem is that the entire kingdom rests on her fragile shoulders. The king asked her what they should do with the monsters. And he asked for help for the last time. The girl agreed, but on one condition. My selfishness is dangerous and Felipe's well-being is a small price to pay for the battle. I demand generous payment for my services. The king asked what she was talking about. Alexa explained to him that she wanted to get paid for the work she did. The father reminded that this was a debt to the country, not a business deal. Alexa said that she often remembers the past. The only way to thank her for all her work is through a reward. And money is the best gratitude. She asked if the aristocracy would not understand her importance if her work was appreciated. For one monster, Alexa demanded 2,000 gold coins. And the princess added that in wars, each monster will be counted separately. The king gave in and accepted her terms, since there was nothing left to do. Then Alexa said that she was leaving and added that at home, she would calculate how much he owed her for monsters and hunting competitions. The king was shocked. When Alexa left, he said, she wants 2,000 gold coins, that's almost a year's salary for one soldier. And this is for one more monster? This is almost the same as refusing to carry out an order. Was she blackmailing me? No, she's not that smart, but why is everything going wrong? In the palace of the Duke of Belcala, his servant Solovan asked his master if there was a reason for their delay in Philip. Belcalan replied that he had personal business here. A boy, Mill, looked into the Archduke's office. The servant Salovan scolded the boy for not knocking. He told the Duke that he had an urgent letter from Princess Alexa. Solovan had never seen Alexa and asked the Duke what was in the letter. Threats or a challenge to a duel. Belcalan answered him that this was not such a letter. Then the servant asked why the princess was sending him a letter. The boy replied that Salovan was wrong, and the princess was simply inviting the gentleman to tea. Belcalan replied, that's right, and smiled at the boy. Mill said that the princess allowed the answer to be sent to her until tomorrow. But the duke said that he would answer the princess right away and asked him to give her the letter. Servant Salovine did not understand what was happening to the duke. Will he answer the letter? My master, who is always as serious as a stone, fell in love with a monster? Thought the servant, and he did not really like this thought. A few days later, Archduke Belcalan stood before the king. His majesty said that he invited him to solve the monster problem. They are on the way to your estate, be careful, said the king. But the duke admitted that he would be staying in the capital on personal matters. 
The king protested that the duke of a country should never refuse orders because of personal matters, but he agreed to postpone this issue for a while. Felicolon asked the king if he had not said it was urgent. His majesty replied that they did not have a leader for the groups, then what was the point of urgently sending people? His majesty said that he hoped for Alexa, but she refused. And he admitted that he could not find a responsible person in this country. Then Belcolon asked why he should not send Prince William. This will help him govern the country in the future, the archduke added. Belcolon promised to train him with his majesty's permission. The duke and Alexa, I can't control them anymore, thought the king. Archduke Belcolon woke Alexa, who was sleeping on a bench in the garden. The girl jumped up in surprise and asked what he was doing here and how he found her. The duke said that the maids showed him where she was. Alexa said that she read until late at night when in fact she had a duel with Lord Essenhar. Alexa suggested continuing their conversation at the tea table. On the way there, the girl asked the duke why he came so early, because they were supposed to meet after lunch. Felicolon replied that his majesty had summoned him here. Don't tell me that his majesty ordered you to kill the monsters? The girl asked in surprise. The duke took her hand and said that Prince Wilhelm would now take over the conquest of the monsters. Alexa did not believe what she heard and demanded details. As they drank tea, Belcolon revealed that he had refused to participate in the war. Then Alexa asked how soon he would leave for his estate. Felcolon replied that he would like to stay in the capital for a while. Then the girl asked what he forgot here. In the capital. There are beautiful flowers here, I want to take a closer look at them, replied the duke. Alexa was surprised but replied that irises grow in the royal garden. She invited him to finish his tea and take a walk in the garden. While walking, Alexa asked the duke what his favorite flower was. He replied that he did not know. Alexa didn't understand why he said then that he stayed here because of the flowers. Belkalin said that he does not know their names, but just wants to take a closer look and choose. Then the girl took him by the hand and led him through the garden. The flowers here for the most part are from other regions. I heard they are difficult to control because they are not yet known to us. Alexa thought about the fact that the flowers were from other countries. From a foreign country. Is there a word that better describes me in this world? I'm a stranger here. She uploaded. Belkalin asked Alexa for forgiveness. Since she was sad, he thought that he had offended her in some way. The girl said she was fine. And Belkalon said, Alexa, would you like to go with me to the festival in the capital? The girl was happy because, in essence, this meant that he invited her on a date. Alexa replied to Belkalon that she would be happy to go to the festival with him and would look forward to this day. Suddenly, she heard a voice familiar to her. What a pleasant surprise. I was just planning to visit you since you were too ill to accept my invitations. Are you feeling better now? asked Princess Ariel and added that she did not expect to see the Archduke here. Belkalon greeted Princess Ariel. The princess asked the Archduke if he was not going to return to his estate. Alexa replied that Belkalon intended to stay in the capital on business. Princess Ariel's maid coughed pointedly and said, Princess Alexa, even if you are a member of the royal family, you must address the duke by his title. Calling someone by name is something that a lower-class aristocracy would do. Therefore, this could cause damage to the royal family. Alexa was about to start an argument with her, but Belkalon stopped her and told everyone that it was he who asked Alexa to call him by his name. I asked the princess to call me by name, so I advise you to watch your words, the duke added. The maid apologized to him for offending him. Princess Ariel also apologized to the duke for her maid and invited him to have tea with her as an apology. But the duke refused. Felcolon said that they should ask Alexa for forgiveness, not him. Ariel apologized to her sister for her maid. Alexa replied that everything was fine. It's okay, Ariel. Belcolon and I understand everything, Alexa said. Ariel was surprised by their closeness, but she told her sister that she was very happy for her. After all, you had no friends at all in the palace. I'm glad you're getting along with the Archduke. This suggests that you are getting used to life in the palace. To be honest, I'm even a little envious. I myself would like to get along with the Duke, Princess Ariel admitted. I never had the opportunity to meet you, so I'm just happy that we are all here today, Ariel told Belcalon. Princess Ariel invited the Duke to have tea with her, but he took Alexa's hand and said that it was time for them to return. Belcalon told Alexa that he would take her to the palace. My apologies, Princess Ariel, but I don't have much time. I'm afraid I won't be able to join your tea party, he answered Ariel.
Ariel replied that it was okay. They could sit together another time. The Duke said goodbye and pulled Alexa along with him. The girl followed him. You must be very busy if you are in such a hurry, Alexa asked the Duke when they walked away a little. The guy replied that they could go slower. Then the girl asked if it was he who said that he had little time. Belkalon replied that he had all the time in the world to spend with her. The next day, Ariel invited Alexa to tea. Ariel was making cookies, which Alexa loved. Alexa didn't expect anything less. She knows her sister's tastes too well. And finally, Ariel asked the question that worried her so much. Alexa, did you see off the Archduke yesterday? Alexa replied that she behaved appropriately, so she had no reason to worry. And since Giselle warned her, she did not do anything disgraceful to the royal family. The girl understood that yesterday's meeting with Ariel was not an accident. She most likely intended to meet with her and Belkalon. Ariel is kind and affectionate to her sister, at least when they are alone. However, when strangers are around, she seems to be suffocating her, imperceptibly but persistently. It is quite difficult to discern any kind of tenderness in such behavior. Princess Ariel is an extremely complex person. Therefore, the current Alexa would prefer not to get involved in this. But she doesn't want to leave it as it is, and she wants to take revenge for the Alexa who suffered. I just want to return what was stolen from her, the current Alexa decided. Alexa, what did you talk about with the Archduke? Ariel asked again. Alexa didn't understand why she needed this, but she replied that the Duke invited her to go to the festival with him. Do you mean the Festival of Abundance? Ariel asked in surprise. No, I'm afraid you won't succeed, she added. Alexa replied that she did not need her sister's permission to do this. The royal family holds a celebration on the same day. And since you are a member of this family, your presence is expected, said Ariel. Alexa replied that she was not talking about that particular day. The girl understood that Ariel was obviously obsessed with Alex. But what is the reason? Ariel continued to ask about the Duke and waited for a specific answer from her sister. When Alexa said it was a secret, Ariel just lost her temper. Why are you so upset? This is not like you, said Princess Alexa. Ariel apologized and said that she didn't mean to raise her voice at all. And she admitted that she was simply upset that her sister was hiding something from her. Alexa replied that everyone has secrets intended only for themselves. I can't tell you absolutely everything about how it was as a child. I don't want anyone to know about our plans with Belkalon, Alexa honestly told her sister. Just like you didn't tell me about your relationship with the Marquis of Bedford, I don't want to share some things with you. You understand, right? Alexa finished. Then, after a short pause, Alexa asked why not spend time with the Marquis instead of wasting it on her. Alexa watched her sister's reaction, and she couldn't tell for sure whether Ariel was happy or was about to burst into tears. The expression on her face was completely unreadable. Alexa and Belkalon met at the festival. The guy asked why she came alone. Alexa asked who else she was supposed to come with. Felkalon was worried that this was very dangerous, and he asked her not to do that again and to be sure to take one of the servants with her as an escort. The girl laughed because the word dangerous was not for her, and she asked if she really looked like someone who would need help. Then she smiled and said that they needed to hurry if they wanted to have time to explore everything here, and took the duke by the hand. Alexa couldn't believe that she was holding her first festival in the company of Archduke Belkalon. Plus, Everything around looked so delicious. The girl was constantly distracted by food, and the Duke held her hand and asked her to be close because she might get lost. Alexa was offended that he mistook her for a child. Later they saw a sweet shop. Belkalon asked the girl to wait a little and then he brought her fruit sherbet. It tasted amazing. Then the guy said that there was a fountain nearby and they immediately went there. Alexa felt like she was in heaven. The sherbet was excellent and she fed it to the Duke. Belkalon admitted that although it was childish, it was very funny and he liked it. Therefore, he also took a spoon and began to feed Alexa. The girl was so happy that she still got to this festival. As they walked, they came to a place that seemed different to Alex from the others at the festival. Belkalon replied that guild members and mercenaries were gathering here. For this reason, she should always be on guard to avoid minor troubles. When Alexa saw the yogurt sign, the guy knew she wanted that too and the Duke asked her to wait while he bought her yogurt. While Alexa was waiting, she noticed how many creepy people there were. She thought that this might have something to do with the fact that there are quite a lot of weapon stalls here. 
The girl decided that she could look around a little. She found one shop very interesting. She thought that jewelry was often hidden in such places. When the princess saw this object, she did not quite understand what it was. It looked like a pen in a painted case. Alexa told the seller that she would take it. The seller asked if the girl was sure of her choice. After all, this pen is not entirely simple. Alexa replied that she was sure and reached for her pen. So this is where you are. I am buying it. Name your price, the guy said to the seller. Alexa asked the guy who he was and why she should give him this pen. The guy replied that he was the one who knew much more about this thing than she did. And he grabbed the pen and held it in his hand. And Alexa did not want to let go of his hand. She began to argue with him that she was the first to notice this pen. The guy replied that since she had not yet paid for it, the pen did not belong to her. They made such a noise that everyone around them paid attention. Killian, for the sake of all that is holy, explain what is happening here, asked the guy's father. Then the Archduke approached them and told Alexa that she could not afford to walk around like that here. He admitted that he was very worried that something had happened to her. I apologize, Your Grace. Please forgive my son's insolence, asked Count Ergen. Belkalon told him that everything was fine. And Alexa, hearing the Count's surname, remembered that Alexa's mother, Camilla, came from the house of Ergen. They own the largest trading establishments in Felipe. Then it must be Alexa's uncle, Duncan Ergen. And yes, Alexa, this pen is cursed. You didn't know about this? Belkalon asked in surprise. A greedy demon placed a curse on her and wished... Anyone who touches her will be deprived of their magical powers, the duke said. He incinerated it in his hand. I wanted to prevent you from losing your magic, but you treated me like I was some kind of thief, admitted Killian Ergen. Alexa wanted to deal with the seller of this pen, but he was no longer there. Belkalon said it was good that she didn't lose much magic, but he really asked her to be careful next time, since the power magic stolen by the demon is no longer returned. Alexa couldn't believe that something so harmless at first glance could turn out to be so dangerous. She was so engrossed in that pen. The girl thought that someone could have planned this. Belkalon asked Alexa to be more reasonable in the future and not take things of this kind into her hands. Then they said goodbye to the Count and left. Killian thought that the Archduke was ready to incinerate him on the spot, protecting Alexa. Killian called his father, but he said, Alexa, who would have thought that I would see you again? She looks exactly like you, Camilla. As they continued their walk, Alexa asked Belkalon the question that had been worrying her so much. That pen, it didn't work on you, did it? Belkalon replied that demonic objects do not affect people like themselves. And although he is not a full-fledged demon, demonic blood still flows in him. The child of a demon and a human, and a princess turned monster. It is not difficult to guess why a connection formed between them. Alexa saw herself reflected in him. How can you behave so recklessly on the eve of our sacred festival? The king shouted. Alexa understood thanks to whom he knew about this. You must be in the palace and accompany the delegation from Ophelia, and for your own good you will be faithful to your duties. He continued. Father, I am sure that Alexa will now think about her actions, so please don't be so harsh on her, Ariel begged. The father said that for the sake of Ariel he is letting Alexa go but now he will watch her closely. Ariel asked her sister if she was angry with her for telling her father about the walk. So that's what happened? Alexa asked. Ariel replied that she was worried about her sister, not only because she is new to the capital, but also because she was with the Archduke. He may be a member of the royal family, but he is first and foremost a demon. You may not understand yet, but he is cruel and terrible, said Ariel. Alexa replied that Ariel herself recently invited him for a cup of tea. I have nothing more to say to you, Ariel. You've already exhausted my trust, Alexa said as she left. Ariel shouted after her. Liar, this is not about trust at all, but about the Archduke, right? He is so dear to you that you don't even obey the will of the king for his sake. Alexa turned and said that she didn't think Ariel could be so upset about something like that. Ariel asked her sister to answer, but she said that she already knew the answer. Among all those cruel and selfish people in the palace, he was the only one who took my side. If you continue, you will only distance us further from each other. Now please forgive me, Alexa said and left. But Ariel still shouted after her and asked her to come back and talk. Alexa was angry that she didn't understand her. Alexa was not expecting his visit. But the maid Lily announced that a guest had arrived. And it turned out to be Count Ergen. 
At the table, he said that he was pleased to know that she was doing well. We haven't seen each other for a long time, uncle, said Alexa. The count replied that he should have met her earlier and asked for forgiveness for not doing so. The girl replied that she understood. After all, he must have been busy with family matters. The count said that he had heard that she would be accompanying a delegation from Ophelia. Alexa was surprised at how quickly rumors spread. The uncle asked how the preparations were going. The girl replied that it was more difficult than she suggested. The girl said that due to the fact that she was still locked in the Kennedy estate as a monster, news of the notoriety of the Aphelian delegation did not reach her. Despite the might of the entire empire behind them, they are also notorious for their arrogance. They looked down on the kingdom and were ready to reproach the slightest mistake. They are a time bomb that suddenly fell into my hands. If I back down, I will face the wrath of the royal family, who were not kind to me anyway. The Count offered her his help. My commercial organization will supply you with everything you need. We will teach you the intricacies of communication, etiquette, and knowledge of politics. And we will do everything else that may be necessary to make a good impression. We will also provide you with the best gifts that will be given to them. If you complete this task, you will be able to strengthen your position. Alexa asked the Count what he wanted in return. He asked if she could do it. Alexa asked first to announce the price, and then she would make a decision. The Count praised her for being an excellent dealmaker. The girl replied that the blood of Felipe's best traders still flows in her. Then the Count admitted that he was pursuing only one goal. He wants Alexa to help make their family's app official. The girl thought that he wanted to use her for political purposes. Therefore, she replied that he had chosen the wrong person. Unlike my sister, I do not have enough power. I was named second princess, without any special rights in politics. Then the Count said, I didn't mean politics and power. How long are you going to live this way? Early loss of mother, exile to the palace, oppressive past. Are you really just going to turn a blind eye to this? You have become too fused with your victim princess side who has been through a lot. Alexa told her uncle that he was already crossing all boundaries. The Count said that he wanted only the best for her and she ignores the opinion of the rest of the aristocracy. So you came here just to talk about this topic? Then I'm not going to talk any further, said the princess. Are you afraid of being the center of attention? Do you want to live in peace? I would have done the same thing having seen all the ins and outs of the palace, but there is something you didn't realize. Princess, you could not have become invisible from the moment you were born. Whether you want it or not, you will be forced to take part in this, said the count. Alexa only wished for a peaceful and quiet life, which Lee Hanbyul lacked so much. The Count said, You must become the one who will represent the Ergen family. Not me, but you. We need to get back into the game. After the death of Camilla, your mother, it was as if we were excluded from the capital's society. No one wants to know the family of a concubine who committed suicide. Did you commit suicide? Alexa was surprised. The Count said that when Camilla had not yet died and Ergen had not established themselves in politics, it took quite a long time. She gave birth to a monster. A princess who became a monster and her mother who committed suicide. It was no wonder that the rumors were so hyped. But these are just rumors. And yet, Ergen, isn't this the family that produced the concubine and the princess? Such rumors cannot affect such a family, asked the princess. And Alexa continued to think, what if there was something more behind the rumors? If there is real power to spread rumors? This hypothesis is not accurate. But Ergen, who has power, the king's actions to restrain Alexa, it all points to one thing. Uncle, was the royal family behind these events? She asked. He didn't answer directly, and Alexa clarified that he wanted her to gain strength. That's right, I want the aristocratic faction to follow you, the Count replied. Alexa asked him if it wasn't too reckless to bet his family on the forgotten second princess. The Count replied that she was afraid to meet them face to face. The girl knew the people the princess had to deal with, his royal majesty and the aristocrats from the king's faction. And she wasn't afraid of them. The fear of losing her comfortable life shackled her. But there is always a price to pay for confrontation. And Alexa said that she will be the only one who has to face this. But the Count objected. Our Ergen family will be with the princess. Alexa reminded him that if he lost, he would lose everything. He replied that she could not be defeated. Because Ergen does not participate in fights where there is room for loss, he added.
Alexa asked what would happen if she refused. The Count replied that it would only get worse. Therefore, she just needs to move forward and they will help her. Alexa understood that Count Ergen was right and this battle could not be avoided. And the royal family will punish her even more. Count Ergen informed Alexa that after her consent, they would immediately begin preparing a reception for the delegation. The girl didn't know what the real Alexa was, but she wasn't going to back down. Alexa walked out onto the balcony and wondered if she would do well. Although the decision cannot be changed, she always doubts before starting. She is afraid of losing everything and living as before, because all this is still not hers. The girl wondered if the real Alexa was cursing her for her selfishness. But Lee Hanbuehl didn't want to come here and become Alexa. Lily told the princess that she was seeing off the count. The girl said that she would take a walk in the garden. The princess sat under a tree in the garden and cried. She didn't want to blame Alexa for her weakness, but she was very afraid of becoming Lee Hanbel again. Suddenly, Belkalon approached her and asked why she was crying. The girl thought why she always looked so ridiculous in front of him. The duke held her close and calmed her down. Then he asked who upset her so much, but the girl asked Belkalon to tell her that everything would be fine. Everything will be fine. You have nothing to worry about. You are safe. No one will harm you, Belkalon said and gently wiped away her tears. Alexa was happy to have this person next to her, but she was afraid of what would happen to her if this warmth left her. She was afraid that she would not be able to cope with this emptiness. The princess hugged the duke and asked him to just stay by her side, and Belkalon promised that he would not go anywhere, and they sat like that for some more time. When the princess fell asleep, the duke brought her into the room and told the maid Lily that he would carry her to the bed. The duke laid Alexa down and kissed her forehead, wishing her good night. Lily thanked the duke for bringing the princess. Belkalon asked if Princess Alexa had an audience with anyone today. The maid replied that Count Ergen had come to see her, and after their meeting ended, the princess was very upset. Belkalon realized that the count was looking for Alexa after the festival. Come out, don't make me repeat it twice, Belkalon shouted. A guy appeared from the circle. Ha, huh, nothing has changed, my brother, he said. Who is your brother? asked Belkalon. We are brothers, Belkalon. Were we not born of the same father? Only I was born a full-fledged demon, and you were born in a small human belly. Abraxas himself considers you his brother. You must understand that this is a great honor for you, the guy added. The demon asked if their relationship turned sour. Would their late father be upset? Belkalin replied that he did not want to hear about it from the man who killed their father. Have you been seeing Princess Alexa much lately? A woman with dark hair like ours. You seem to like her a lot. She looks like your mother, said Abraxas. It would be quite fun to turn her into a demon. Come to think of it, our father was also quite romantic. He caught the one he liked and turned her into a demon like us. Who would have thought that the notorious Belzebuth could do such a thing? Even though he put Mana into her, her body was human, and she did not last long. However, Princess Alexa also has great magical powers. Since she has such a body, she will last quite a long time. Unlike your mother, she could become the perfect demon. Belkalon grabbed his brother by the shirt and told him not to even dare touch it. You look like our father. I don't think you even know that you are the son of the demon king. Raphael, that idiot, seems to still be convinced that you are of the same blood. In fact, not a single drop of blood was mixed. In any case, thanks to stupid people, Belzebeth's son is considered a scion of the royal family. The only one, the Grand Duke, he lives well, said the guy. What do you mean by this? Belkalon asked. Abraxas said that he wanted to give him advice. Advice as a brother, because my brother is naive and stupid. Think carefully no matter how much demon blood you have. Can you afford to be a monster with a girl? Then you, I could be a more suitable heir to Belzebuth, said the demon. Belkalon wanted to hit the guy, but he stopped his fist. The demon said that his daughter-in-law claims that some dirty half-breed cannot defeat me. But is it fair to compare the magical powers of a half-demon and a demon? Abraxas boasted. The guy bound Belkalon's neck with magic and said that he would take care of this princess. He then said that Belkalon was too calm and asked if he had inherited humanity. And then the demon said, My father loved this half-breed bastard. Let the Asmodian seal movement be criticized among the people. King Felipe's predecessor protected this woman. He made a pregnant woman his queen. The guy who was born this way became a member of the royal family. The movement of Asmodian seals, which spread like wildfire throughout the continent, was fortunately avoided, only in order to protect the half-breed and the human race.
It's a shame for the demon that the king of the underworld did such a stupid thing. As an older brother, I will change your habits, the guy said and lowered him to the ground. Abraxas directed his magic at his brother, towards the head, and Belkalon directed the entire accumulation of his magic into his stomach, and, immobilizing him, said, Don't touch Alexa. Flood flowed from the demon's mouth and he said, Just this power, Mana, we can't use Mana, she is the opposite of demonic forces. Like you said, I'm a damn half-demon. Let's see if I can use these two powers together, Belkalon replied. The demon said that this is all nonsense. If you don't touch Alexa, I won't use this power. But if you try again, then I will kill you, the duke warned the demon. Then the demon asked his brother why he didn't kill him right now. And can this be called sympathy for the only relative on this earth? Felkalon replied that he could think as he wanted. The demon said that this cannot be done. He can't just stop being human. But the duke did not listen to him and left. Sasi Hikuch was responsible for teaching etiquette to the royal family of Epoli for 20 years. Now, after retirement, he teaches at the academy and teaches etiquette to young children. He taught the princess how to stand and hold her dress correctly, and she was very annoyed by this. Princess, be patient. Are you going to show your vulnerable spots to your enemies? Said Count Ergen. After demonstrating in front of Count Ergen and learning how to walk with Cece, after three hours of etiquette lessons, Alexa went to the next room, where she was scolded by the teacher for being late. The distance from the dance hall to the office is approximately 600 yards, and you should have arrived here in 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Even if we take into account your fatigue after the previous lesson, you had 3 minutes and 15 seconds. But you were another 32 seconds late. 32 seconds is precious time. For a farmer, it is picking 5 berries, and for a seamstress, it is picking up 3 stitches. I want scientists to understand how precious every second is. This is an issue that can be filed under Section 436 of the Imperial Code for Violation of Personal Intangible Assets. This man is the wisest man in Felipe, Archimelaus Odd. This is the teacher who will teach Alexa the history of the continent. He also teaches Killian Ergen. As punishment for being 32 seconds late, the teacher assigned Alexa to memorize the entire book on the history of the empire by tomorrow. The girl had never been so overloaded before. When Alexa entered her room, Killian was sitting there insulting her and calling her hurtful names. The girl asked him to leave her room, but the guy didn't leave and started calling her stupid again. After he insulted her in front of the maid who brought them tea, Alexa exploded and beat him. I don't care how tactless you are, but at least when there is someone else, why don't you treat me like a princess? Alexa asked. Killian said that he realized that he would have no fun at all if he behaved so impudently. Count Ergen apologized for his lateness and asked if they had been quarreling. When they all sat down at the table, Alexa said that she needed to ask them something. She put the bag on the table and said, This is a monster pheromone. The Count asked where she got it. The girl asked if they remembered the monster attack on the day of the hunting competition. The Count replied that the entire royal family had to evacuate that day. Alexa said that this pouch is the cause of all the chaos. Someone secretly slipped it into the bag of Archduke Belkalin's horse. This bag contains a pheromone that attracts monsters. That day, the monsters seemed to have gone crazy and specifically chased him into the hunting grounds. The girl said that she had done her own research but to no avail. And I thought they might find out something, so I brought it here. The Count asked if she was looking for the manufacturer of this bag, but the princess replied that she was looking for a buyer. And the reason why he left him to the Duke is kept there. Alexa also said that in battle she saw the skin of E monster which was so durable that it could not be compared with anything else. Therefore, she offered to take their skins, to use them to strengthen the knight's armor by placing the skin between the iron armor and underwear. The Count replied that this was a great idea. He promised that he would immediately notify trusted people, and they would get to work. Count Ergen said he would take care of the materials and implementation costs. When large-scale production begins, profits will be divided six to four. Or how about 80% for the princess? The Count asked Alexa. The girl was worried that then her uncle would have very little left. But he replied that since such a quantity of leather was not easy to find on the market, the price would be serious. And even at a rate of 20%, you can get a stable profit. Just give me exclusive rights to the products of this product. The Count answered her. Now we'll get to the main point before that. Can I ask you something? 
I don't know if something like this would be an insult to you. What is your relationship with the Grand Duke? The uncle asked Alexa. The girl thought about it. They went through a lot, but is it possible to say based on those moments? She likes him, but is it sincere and not out of sympathy or friendship? Alexa replied that she didn't know. Then the count asked her to be careful in future because he is a demon. The princess retorted that she thought he was an excellent young man. The world doesn't look at the truth, don't you know that better than anyone else? Said the uncle. And Alexa understood that he was right. But she could not push away the man who extended his hand to her. She needed him now. Then Alexa said that they needed to find another person. If they cannot accept the Grand Duke, then I will not be accepted either. The girl thought and said that she and the Archduke were alike. The princess admitted that he is the one who has special meaning for her. The Count was upset and said that Camilla was the same. She also, no matter how many people reached a dead end, did not miss a single person. I hope you don't become like her, said Count Ergen. Walking down the corridor, Alexa thought, Come to think of it, I heard that the Count and Camilla had different views, and they had their secrets. The girl was met by the Duke of Belcalon, and they went for a walk. Alexa said that the Count's garden was more magnificent than the garden in the royal palace. Felcalon replied that this family was the best in trade matters, and there are many flowers here that are not often seen. When the princess was looking at the flowers, she remembered the Count's words and decided to ask the Duke what the relationship was between them. What is between me and you? She didn't care what anyone said if Belcalon thought the same way as her, but he was silent. Have you really never considered us special? The girl asked. She was starting to get nervous because there had been silence between them for so long. Alexa didn't want to believe that it was all a mistake, and she left. But the guy grabbed her hand and she said, I'm asking for the last time, what do you think about us? The Duke replied that he would not understand. In fact, I'm the one who's why we can't be together. I don't dare to start a relationship, Belcalon admitted. Is that your answer? Alexa asked. I was the only one who was mistaken. I thought you were the same as me. I hope you won't get into trouble because of me, Grand Duke, said the princess, and got ready to leave. Alexa, don't say that. Don't call me Duke like you did then. Don't talk as if you're talking to a stranger, the Duke asked. But she left. The girl could not cope with her heart. No matter how many times she went through this, it was still torn to pieces. Therefore she left, leaving him alone. Felcalon came to her again and again. She heard it both in the castle and in the Count's estate. However, she didn't see him. There was nothing left between them, because she wanted to belong only to him. Her uncle told her that the lilacs in the garden had almost withered as it was getting colder at night. And he asked her how about a walk in the garden. And the girl only thought that the lilacs were blooming on the last day of their meeting with Belcalon. The princess already regretted that everything had turned out this way. Maybe I should have been content with the relationship we had she thought as she walked down the corridor. Alexa, the princess suddenly heard. It was he, and she thought that she needed to run away because it was he who made the choice. The girl decided that there should be no more vain hopes. But the duke caught up with her in the garden and hugged her tightly, pressing her tightly to himself and said, Alexa, just give me a chance to explain myself. I will become your protection and support. While we were in an uncertain relationship, everything was fine. But now I will become your weakness. I won't be able to get to where you and the Count are going. It will only be more difficult if you keep me close to you. Alexa replied that she was a monster just like him. But the Duke objected. We are not alike. We are not the same. Alexa didn't understand what that meant. I'm a mudblood. No, I'm not even human. The more you know, the more you will be hated and despised. The Duke admitted that he was weak. And so he let her go. If you had chosen me, I would not have been able to push you away. Then I will become your weak point, he admitted. The girl looked into his eyes and accepted that she would choose a man who would look only at her. And she will never be able to refuse it, because it is beyond her capabilities. Alexa kissed Belcalon and he asked, Alexa, did you choose me? That's right, I chose you. The princess answered the Archduke. Now you won't be able to escape. I won't let you go no matter how hard you try, said the princess and pressed herself tightly to her beloved man. He understands very well what she is trying to say, the looks of people with hostility and disgust, but still she chose him. He is better than anything she could have, because she loves him.
and so they became lovers. And from that moment on, they became responsible for each other. Sullivan, how many spies did the king send after me? Belkalon asked a servant while in his office late at night. He replied, There are many of them, but we know everyone. Kill everyone, ordered the archduke. Sullivan was shocked by this order and said that even if they carried out a purge, this would not be the best way. I have to make sure that the king doesn't care about anything else but me. And tell your wife to come to the capital. Our stay in the capital will be very long, said the duke. Princess Alexa and Count Ergen's son, Killian Ergen, rode together in a carriage to a discussion meeting with Prime Minister Louis Avoncron. Killian said that all Felipe's youth visit this place. Louis introduces the nobles into the political world, often providing opportunities to share his knowledge. Count Ergen told Alexa to focus only on participating in the debates, but since she entered politics, it would be quite stressful. In this debate, you have to demonstrate two things. The first is the dignity of a princess, not a monster. And second is the determination to actively participate in politics. We don't expect you to win the debate, Killian said. Alexa replied that she knew about it, but she was afraid that she would get confused. The guy advised her not to worry about the nobles fluttering around. The princess replied that it was a little surprising to hear such words from him. Killian replied that he did not want to argue with her all the time and could calm down a little since he was going to represent a new person at the request of his father. When they arrived at the building, Killian asked Alexa to pretend they didn't know each other. The girl did not understand how to do this if they arrived together. The discussion room announced that Princess Alexa Dwight and Killian Ergen had arrived, and immediately people in the hall began to whisper about the monster. Killian greeted Prime Minister Louis Avoncron. Welcome, Sir Ergen. I see we have an unexpected guest, replied the Prime Minister. Thank you for your hospitality. I am glad to join such a prestigious discussion, replied Princess Alexa. Louis Avoncron replied that he was honored to see her here and wished the princess fruitful conversations. Alexa thanked Louis, but she didn't like him. She had no outright disgust for him, but he seemed to her like a snake biting on the sly. The Prime Minister asked Killian to escort the princess to the refreshments. Two girls approached the princess and one of them greeted her. Princess Alexa replied that she was pleased to meet you and called her by name. The girl was surprised that the princess knew her name. Alexa replied that she had heard that Countess Isabel was participating in a hunting competition. The second girl told the princess that she seemed more and more beautiful day by day. You are exaggerating, Lady Ciel, and yet I am pleased to hear this, Alexa replied. Alexa, are you also participating in today's discussion? If I had known, I would have gone with you. The princess heard the familiar voice of her sister, Princess Ariel. Nice to meet you, sister. Don't we have to be here? I didn't say it because it would have been awkward for my sister. I hope this does not contradict royal etiquette. Don't you want to tell your father about this? Princess Alexa answered her sister. Countess Isabel said that this was certainly not contrary to royal etiquette since this meeting was not organized by the royal family. Harry lowered her head and admitted that Alexa was not to blame, and she is very sorry that her sister has not been around lately. Alexa replied that she was busy preparing to receive the delegation, as she did not want to disappoint her sister and father again. Lady Cecile asked Princess Alexa how the preparations were going. The princess replied that she was trying her best not to fall on her face, and Alexa added that she was very worried since this was her first time doing something like this. Countess Isabel mentioned that the princess did not live long in the palace. One friend of Ariel reproached Isabel for having a long tongue and added, Are you saying that Princess Alexa is superior to Princess Ariel? The girl replied that she did not mean that at all, and Alexa thought that if everything was like this, would she be able to take on the heavy burden of the royal family? Still, everyone around calls her the Monster Alexa, but she is the second princess, a member of the royal family, so she will be able to stand confidently in front of them. However, in the eyes of Lady Manuela, and everything is simple, Alexa is still the monster of the royal palace. Princess Alexa said it was time for her to get ready for the debate. Prime Minister Louis of Ancaron welcomed all guests to the forum and said, Thank you everyone for visiting the forum. Here anyone can comment on what is happening. This is a place where you can freely express your opinion. No charge is allowed. Please enjoy the discussion. Topic of today's discussion. Current situation in Felipe. A delegation from the Aphelian Empire will be visiting us soon. 
Imperial delegates come to establish friendly relations between countries, the Prime Minister began. For Felipe and the current state of their affairs, if we talk about the most dangerous of countries, one cannot fail to mention the Empire. Now Felipe is on the side of the Empire, giving something in return to be on the same side. It was a necessary evil that one had to be prepared for in such a situation. How do you feel about the choice of the kingdom? He asked after this speech to representatives of high society and the aristocracy, even taking into account the persecution that Felipe suffered. Assistance from the Affilia Empire should have been refused. To repay all the efforts, it is necessary to take action. And these measures consist of war, replied one of the guests in the audience. The other guy said, But Sir Hippain, there is no guarantee that we will win. Are you underestimating Felipe's military power? Just thinking about defeat is capitulation, the other guy answered. Another guy asked if they didn't know that wasn't true. And Ophelia's military power far exceeds them. Sir Hippain said that one could win by forming an alliance with countries that were at war with Eppel. Alexa realized that radicals dominated public opinion, although in essence this is just nonsense of noble fools. Isn't there Alex's monster? Hippain suddenly shouted. You can stop Ophelia just like you always have, he shouted. Defeat Ophelia, stop them, the guys chanted. Alexa decided to answer them. Sir, why do you think that I agree to this war? Princess Alexa asked. The guy replied that the princess was always in the front row. Yes, and as a member of the royal family, you have to protect our country, another guy added. Yes, I have to be more vigilant about the situation, she replied. Sir Hippain said that now was not the time to hesitate and added, I see the princess does not know the details, but the Ophelia Empire is crumbling at the seams. The time has come to destroy it. Princess Alexa replied that the guy was talking about outdated rumors that the Ophelian Empire was in danger. However, now a new trend has emerged in the empire, stimulating the economy and as a result economic growth. Of course, they didn't know this. After all, this is the most important secret that Count Ergen spoke about. With this information, you can easily put pressure on your opponent. Hippain asked how the princess could trust rumors so unreasonably, and he added that this is more like the excuses of a frightened princess. Then Princess Alexa said, I propose to also discuss the exchange rates of the countries. Did you know that the empire's currency is strengthening? All this was done under the pretext of paying tribute. What about such fast export? Moreover, thanks to a secretly passed bill, citizens have their debts reduced by more than 30%. And you declare that you want war with the side that is on the brink? Is your statement reasonable? asked Princess Alexa. Another guy asked the princess if they could win if they invested most of their finances in military power. She replied that victory cannot be judged only from the aspect of strength. If diplomatic relations with other countries are severed, Felipe will be isolated. Who then will be responsible for people's lives and the economy? In addition, when all finances are invested only in the power of the army, a number of other problems will appear in Felipe. And please answer honestly. How many families will go into battle? Asked the princess. Hippain replied that they would not be able to participate in the war, since they were the successors. Alexa replied that this is true. The heads of families go to war. Only fathers will take part in the fighting. It seems young people are brave enough to send their fathers there. I don't want to break the unbridled spirit of young people, but there is a good chance that we will lose this war. And who will fall first after our defeat? My father. King Felipe's life will be at risk first. I am a member of the royal family, and the royal family cannot mindlessly go to war out of fear for the king's life. And now I think I have formulated quite constructively why I am against it. Can anyone object to me? Finished Princess Alexa. The Prime Minister looked at her in surprise, and Lady Cecile offered to drink tea with her during the break, but Alexa refused, saying that she wanted to get some fresh air. Walking down the hallway, Alexa thought that she had done a good job parrying, but she wasn't sure if she had done the right thing. The second part is a light story, so you can relax. Suddenly, she heard some screams and decided to look around the corner of the corridor. There she saw two guys from the debate beating Killian Ergen her cousin with whom she came. If the beast had not come forward, Sir Avankaran might have noticed us. Does your cousin even listen to you? Hippain shouted, holding Killian by the collar. Even if I can't kill the monster, I will kill you and your father. 
Do you know that rats die without even knowing it? The guy said angrily. Oh, you touch my father and I won't leave you alone. Killian responded to this. Hippain said that he would now be their punching bag. But then Alexa appeared and asked what they were saying about the monster. The second guy told her that it was some kind of misunderstanding and they weren't talking about her. The guy made an excuse that they were talking about someone else, but the princess didn't check and punched him in the stomach. Hippain told her that it was just a stupid joke for the heirs. Then Alexa took him by the tie, raised him high above the floor with one hand and asked, So you were joking with Killian? Have you even thought about what to say? Hippain said he would complain about her to his father. Alexa replied that his father would not be able to say a word to her. Killian asked Alexa to stop it. The girl reminded him that those bastards had just beaten him bloody, and she asked if he didn't want her to avenge him. Killian replied that they weren't worth it. Then Alexa threw the guy to the floor. Moving a little away from the guys, the princess asked her cousin why he used magic, which he was very good at. Killian replied that he had a frightening experience, and he is no longer an 11-year-old child, but the memories of those days are not forgotten, and he is still afraid. The revenge I will exact will be slow, admitted Killian, and then Alexa realized that she should be responsible for her cousin's misfortune. For the fall of the famous Ergen family, because she is a monster, the Ergens were not allowed into politics. The Count devoted himself to the revival of the family, and not to the child. Being left all alone at the academy, Killian probably hated me, Alexa thought. Killian asked what they should do with these two. Paris fainted and Hippain begged the princess to forgive him. Alexa told him that her cousin didn't want revenge, but she couldn't let go of the fact that they had insulted her. The guy said that she was smart and beautiful and didn't look like a monster at all. Then Alexa said that he must like her. And so he must confess that he loves her so that all the ladies and gentlemen in the audience can hear. Hippain shouted that he had a fiancé. Alexa said she didn't care. He must fulfill her request, otherwise something that he couldn't even dream of in his worst dreams will happen to him. The guy agreed and took his friend. Alexa returned to Killian and asked him how much he hated her when he was little. He replied that it wasn't as much as she thought. Killian said he realized that he was still the happier of the two because he had a family. Then the guy said to his cousin, Let's go back to the classroom. It's time for you to listen to Sir Hippain's desperate confession. Alexa and Killian watched as Hippain entered the auditorium. Louis Avancran told the guy that he was late and asked him to take his seat. The prime minister asked the guy if he was okay because he looked bad. And Hippain had Alexa's words spinning in his head. If you don't do what I want, you'll die. Louis Avancran asked the guy to take his place. Hippain said he had something to say. Everyone in the room was surprised by this attitude towards the Prime Minister. Hippain asked the guests for a little attention and said, I love Princess Alexa. Everyone started looking at each other in surprise. What are you saying, Hippain? You have a bride, said Princess Ariel's friend. The guy repeated that he loves Princess Alexa. Alexa thought that since they were brother and sister, this would be a great opportunity to get under Lady Manuela's skin. I belong to Princess Alexa, body and soul, the guy repeated. And I won't look at any other woman until I become her man, he added. Another guy in the audience asked, even with an official bride, do you want to make the princess a concubine? One girl in the audience said that if the engagement was broken off, then he and his family would become a laughingstock for the entire kingdom. Whether the family is cursed or destroyed, I always belong to Princess Alexa, the guy repeated. Hippain understood that he had tarnished the honor of his family, but he remained alive. Lady Manuela knew that her brother could not tarnish his family name like that. You, it's all you, she shouted at Princess Alexa, and Princess Ariel tried to calm her friend down. Princess, you threatened Hippain, she finally said. Lady Manuela, how many more princesses will you acquire? Lady Isabel asked Manuela. Alexa was glad that Lady Manuela succumbed to such a stupid provocation. Crazy brother and sister. In any case, now these two will be kicked out of society, she thought. Manuela jumped up and said she wasn't going to take it anymore. Then Alexa asked Luis Avancheron to lend her his soldiers for a while. Lady Manuela shouted, This fool is deceiving everyone, don't you see this? Soldiers, arrest the guilty Julia Manuela, the princess ordered them. The soldiers took the girl into custody and she screamed for them to let her go. Alexa came up to her and said, Lady Manuela, you dared to reproach the royal family. 
Moreover, you insulted the august person with incredibly outrageous words. Vice Chairman of the Military Department responsible for Felipe's security. By doing so, you may cause political unrest due to unfounded rumors. Your actions are regarded as a humiliation of the royal dynasty. And also for violating the national security law, I order Lady Manuela to be immediately sent to prison. Princess Alexa finished. Shut up, I'm not the one who should go to jail. It's you, damn beast. The girl screamed. Alexa took her chin with her hand and looked into her eyes. This damn beast you are talking about is the daughter of the ruler of the country your father serves? said Princess Alexa and turned to leave. The girl shouted after her. The daughter of a prostitute who forgot her place. After all, you are a beast. How do I know if you are truly His Highness's daughter? Everyone in the audience was stunned by her courage and stupidity. And Lady Manuela continued. If not a fallen woman, then why did she commit suicide? There was definitely something to be ashamed of. After these words, she received a slap in the face from Princess Ariel. Even if you are sentenced to death for contempt, you have nothing more to say the princess told her. On behalf of the first princess put her in prison. Princess Ariel, who was formerly Lady Manuela's friend, ordered the soldiers. The girl asked Ariel why she did this. Ariel replied that she did this for her sake because Alexa is a monster. Manuela screamed and struggled. As the soldiers took the prisoner away, Alexa wondered why Ariel stood up for her. Despite the fact that she sat and was silent when Manuela insulted her. And why is she now avoiding her gaze? Alexa found her behavior very strange. In any case, a lot of eyes were now focused on them. Therefore, Alexa asked the Prime Minister to continue the lecture. At the end, he thanked everyone for their presence. The girl noticed that Ariel's place was empty. When the debate ended, Killian approached her, and she asked if he had seen Ariel. The guy replied that perhaps she had already returned to the palace. Alexa thought that Ariel couldn't just leave. The daughter of a prostitute who committed suicide. Instead of refuting Lady Manuela's words, she... Alexa was very worried about her reaction. Maybe these are not just rumors? The girl decided that she needed to find out more about her mother, Camilla. At that moment, she was called. It was Sir Avancaran. He said that he was glad to see her at the lecture and apologized for the fact that such an unpleasant situation had occurred. Alexa replied that it was not his fault. Then the Prime Minister invited Princess Alexa to have a cup of tea with him. The Princess replied that it was a great honor for her, but she did not come here alone. Oh, you rode in the Ergen family's carriage. No need to worry. We will provide a carriage to take you to the Imperial Palace, said Prime Minister Louis of Ancaron. Alexa thought it was strange that he wanted to talk to her alone so badly. Killian told his cousin that everything was fine and she could stay with Sir Avancaron. In the large living room where they were drinking tea, Louis asked Princess Alexa about today's discussion. She replied that there were many interesting comments. Louis of Ancaron replied that it was because they were energetic young people. I think you don't like it when people talk about war so easily, but you were brave enough. Do you think that if you had power, you could keep them close? Asked the Prime Minister. You mean, would I be able to control them? Alexa asked. Oh, you came from the outback. Your behavior changed when you arrived, Louis said. The princess asked, Is change bad? The prime minister responded that her remarks were impressive. Thanks to these passionate expressions, many people's opinions about the war changed. At least they won't talk about the war so frivolously. Therefore, he decided that he should thank her for this. Louis added that he saw how concerned she was about the country. Alexa replied that it was the king's inaction that caused Felipe's condition and this is how any royal family would react. Louis asked if she really thought so. The girl asked what answer he wanted to hear from her. The prime minister noted that she does not want to tell him the truth, most likely because she does not trust him. The princess replied that they met today for the first time, and therefore there is no trust between them. And Alexa herself again felt his snake nature. Even though today is our first meeting, I have been watching the princess all this time, I was wondering how different you are from who you were in Connect. Can people change like that? It's true, it's as if there's another person in your body, Ars, said the Prime Minister. Someone got into your body, he added. Alexa turned pale upon hearing these words. Does he really know my secret? thought the princess. Louis asked her what she thought about this. The girl decided to calm down first, because if she answered without thinking, she would be at a disadvantage. 
Why did you decide that I'm not Alexa? She finally asked. Did you really not feel anything when you saw Lady Manuela's punishment? Princess, please don't shy away from answering, Louis said. You asked how I realized that it was not you. At the debate, I became convinced that you are the other princess, said the Prime Minister, which plunged Alex into shock and stupor. Of course, I am only interested in the current princess. I personally didn't know the real one, only her appearance, he continued. The girl asked why he needed her. Then Louis of Ancaron admitted, Princess, I am convinced that the place of the king should be taken by the one sent by heaven. This control of an entire nation. The place of the king is the highest position in society. This is a heavy burden necessary to preserve the country. Do you think Prince William will be able to rule the country? Alexa replied that Wilhelm is the heir to the throne and therefore he will cope. Then Louis asked if he could do what the current king could not. Havankaran continued that his place on the throne is not simply due to tradition. The first and second prince fought for the throne when the third did not even think about taking it. However, suddenly two princes left this world, and then a third ascended the throne. This cannot be a pure coincidence. Perhaps heaven's will is not always correct. Although all the evidence pointed to an accident, with all due respect to the emperor, but after 20 years of his reign, the worst development is observed in the kingdom, admitted Louis. Prime Minister, aren't you afraid of punishment for insulting the royal family? Princess Alexa asked. Louis of Ancaron replied that he knows the line between possible and impossible. Alexa asked him to stop this dialogue if he knew the line, since she was becoming more and more angry with his words. Louis replied that he understood, but still wanted to continue. The reason why the king was afraid of the princess, do you believe that it is simply because of your monster appearance? And, if you chose the aristocracy for your protection, then this is not the right choice. Do you know what a hunter fears most when faced with prey? These are the fangs of the beast which can easily bite its neck. And then the hunter kills the beast to save himself. Our conversation is over, Prime Minister. I can't sit here anymore, Alexa said and got ready to leave. Louis had a dangerous goal that was understandable to her. He wanted treason from her. Avancran continued that she has the strength and skills to take the crown. Louis asked if she would like to sit on the throne. Alexa responded that this was not a position she should want, and she herself thought that since she was not a real Alexa, she had no desire to fight for the throne. What kind of naive person is this? Do you think Lady Camilla was the same? The question, what should a person who feels nothing for his mother do, is frozen on your face. Being in someone else's body makes you feel alienated from your parents, Louis said. Alexa walked away from the conversation and said that he continued to talk nonsense. Princess, my gut tells me that Lady Camilla has worked harder than anyone else to put the princess on the throne, said the Prime Minister. Alexa responded, Do my mother's wishes matter? Don't you really want to find out what really happened to her? He asked. But the princess was silent. Then Louis invited her to make a deal with him. He admitted that he had sacrificed a lot for this valuable information. Alexa was interested in his proposal. Having walked along a thorny path, the princess will find out the whole truth about Philip, then I will tell you the whole truth about Camilla, suggested Prime Minister Louis of Ancaron. Princess Alexa replied that she had no intention of joining the rebellion. Louis countered that as a patriot, he simply wanted to tell the princess the history of her country. The girl replied that his intentions were clear to her, and she herself would find out the truth about her mother. Then Louis of Ancran asked if she didn't want to know how she got to this place. The reason why you ended up in Princess Alexa's body and why you took her place? I'm convinced that it's not that simple. And I'm the only one who knows your secret, he said. Princess Alexa asked if he was threatening her. The Prime Minister replied that these were not threats, but an agreement and a choice that she would make. Alexa asked, Choice for Felipe? The Prime Minister told Princess Alexa that she looked more impressive than Prince William and deserved to be invested in everything. Louis Avancron gave Alexa time to think and told her to visit him when she made her decision. The girl left without answering a word. Alexa burst into Killian's office. She indignantly told him that she had spoken with the Prime Minister as his father had wished. The girl said that the Prime Minister told her about her uncle's plans. I realized that you are using me to get into the aristocratic faction. Are you planning a coup? Please answer me, uncle. Alexa turned to the count who came to their office in response to her screams. The count was silent. 
How you keep saying that you do this for the sake of your beloved family. However, this does not change the fact that you used me, said Princess Alexa. The uncle replied that it was all for her sake. Alexa screamed at him not to lie to her. You only cared about me in order to make acquaintance with a Vancheron and start a rebellion? The girl said she never thought she would feel betrayed again. And getting angry, she began to destroy and burn everything in the room with the help of her magic. The uncle asked her to stop and listen to him. He told Alexa that if she did not calm down, her life would be in danger. But the princess did not listen to him. It would be better if I lost my power and stopped being someone's puppet. My life, my magic, I will destroy everything, she shouted. Princess, please listen to me. It all started because of my greed. I don't want to justify my actions and only I will pay for them. But princess, even if everything is so, I'm not sure that they will just let you go, said Count Ergen. Alexa screamed, what are you talking about? In the chaos of the uprising, we will only achieve death. Alexa didn't know if Ivankaran had planned this all, but the Ergen family couldn't meet the king despite their status. Even if we get his support, I'm not sure whether our alliance will be strong enough. Why are you joining a obviously losing game? She asked. Alexa said that even her mother wouldn't want her uncle to go down that path. Are you saying that Camilla didn't want this? The princess doesn't remember her childhood? Asked the count. Do you know what choice Camilla had to make because of you? And why she had to live such a terrible life, he told Alexa. She asked what he was talking about, but Count Ergen did not answer. Then he said that he and Camille had a special brother-sister relationship. And my uncle added that he shouldn't have said that. Alexa screamed that he couldn't hide the truth, and someday she will find out everything anyway. The princess will hear nothing more about Camilla from my lips, her uncle answered. One day you will know the truth. However, I will try to hide it as hard as possible. I will delay the moment when you find out everything so that you smile as long as possible, said the count. When Alexa asked what the reason is that he hides the truth so carefully, Count Ergen replied that this was the meaning of his life, and he added that if he doesn't make it in time, he won't be able to meet Camilla. The girl became thoughtful and did not understand anything he said. What should he do? You will be safe under the care of Sarah Van Kron, so there is no need to worry, and I will do what I must. I will jump into the very abyss like a moth to a flame, said the Count. What Alexa heard yesterday about her uncle and Sarah Vankaran, regarding Ergen's plans and the coup, as well as the reasons why she ended up in the palace, no one is saying. It was all too hard for her to think about alone. Alexa wanted to discuss all this with Belkalon. She wanted to tell him about her secret and everything else. Will Belkalon remain by my side after he finds out? Will he love not Alexa, but Lee Hanbiel? I don't want to be abandoned. I don't want to go through Hanbiel's miserable life again. I don't know how selfish it is, but I want him to comfort me in his arms. I need him, Alexa thought as she rode her horse to Belkalon's palace. Alexa burst into the Archduke's office and threw herself into his arms. He didn't expect this and asked why she was here so early. The girl replied that she really wanted to see him. She felt like she was walking on thin ice. Alexa and her Lee Hanbiel, if society finds out that they are not the same person, what will be the reaction? Belkalon hugged her and asked what happened. The girl wanted to tell him everything, but her lips did not move. High treason, politics, her position. The princess was worried whether he would be able to accept all this. She just wanted him to love her. Belkalon, I love you, Alexa replied, deciding that it would be better this way. The guy took her hand and kissed her lips. Alexa asked if this meant he loved her with all his heart, and he asked in response, So what happened, Alexa? Please answer, do you like me or not? She asked. Alexa, I'm afraid when you're like this, the Duke replied. The girl did not understand what this meant. The reason why you are in this state may be caused by me. This might make you not want to see me or maybe you're worried about something because of me, he explained. Alexa replied that there was no reason for such worries. Belkalon admitted to her that he was always afraid. He is as happy to see her as he is afraid. I want to make you happy too. But even if I don't succeed, I'm not sure I can let you go. I'm afraid that because of my selfishness, you will be in danger. I'm sorry for saying such things, the guy admitted. Alexa hugged him and told him it was okay. Then the girl asked what was bothering him. Belkalon admitted that when she is with him, he becomes the happiest person. 
Then Alexa decided to ask him her main question. Will you be with me no matter what I am? She finally asked. The guy replied that it is not he who decides, but she. And he reminded her of that conversation in the garden. It doesn't matter what you choose except for the future where you push me away. This phrase sounded then, and the girl knew that everything depended only on her. I can never give up on you. And this is the honest truth. We will always be together. Belkalon told her and gently hugged her, pressing her to him. Three weeks later at the Avancaron house, the butler met Princess Alexa and told her that the master was waiting for her. She met Marcus Belford in the hallway. Alexa reprimanded him about how to greet the princess properly. Belford said she previously asked to be referred to by her first name rather than her title. The girl replied that they used to be engaged, but now this is not the case at all. Greetings to the second Princess Alexa, said the Marquis. The princess told the butler that she would go further with the Marquis. Walking down the corridor, Belford asked why she had come to see his mentor. If you are so close to your mentor, why don't you ask him yourself? It seems he doesn't consider it necessary to visit you in his business, said Alexa. Marcus told Alexa not to say anything stupid, as he would not turn a blind eye to such things. The girl thought that Belford had known Louis Avoncron since childhood, and she was very curious about the relationship between them. But after this, Alexa has even less confidence in the Prime Minister. Marcus brought her to the office door and said goodbye. You come. I was waiting for you. I'm already starting to worry that you're dragging your feet on making a decision. But still, I'm glad that you chose the right side, said Louis Avancaron at the meeting. Princess Alexa replied that she appreciated his proposal, but still she would like to discuss the terms of their deal. If you want to teach me royal affairs, I ask you to tell me the truth about my mother, about the curse and everything connected with it, the princess asked. Of course, answered Avan Karen. Then Alexa clarified that, apart from concluding this contract, she would not take any other part in his extensive plan. Louis asked the princess, since she agreed to undergo training, if she understood all its consequences. And is she sure that she won't want to join his huge plan? Alexa said, Mr. Avan Karen, I will not arrange the transfer as you want. I think I will only remain one of the candidates for the king's place. Also, Alexa demanded that the training be official so that she could use her name without fear. Louis replied that he was pleased that she would be the candidate. The girl asked when he could tell about her. The prime minister replied that he could not since he was the party that had nothing to do with this. Alexa was indignant at how their agreement was then possible. But Louis said that there was another more knowledgeable person and she herself must find Alexa. Everything you need to hear and know it's better to hear from her. After all, it was she who put the curse on you, the prime minister told her. Lewis added that the witch wanders the world, so he doesn't know exactly when she will be able to visit her. But Alex was not happy with this. No, make her appear as quickly as possible because we have a contract with you. Don't you think my first meeting with her will affect both of us? If you want active action from me, speed up our meeting. The princess insisted. Louis asked if this was an order or a request. Alexa replied that they both needed it. It seems you don't understand what situation you are in. I have many capable students, but you can only learn secrets about yourself through me, said Louis. Alexa understood that he was trying to make her seem more needy and convince her. Agree, I am trying to make concessions with you. But I can show more radical ways of influence, said the princess. Avan Karen asked if she was threatening to kill him. The girl replied that it was not his murder, but the murder of candidates like her. The prime minister asked if she really knew who they were. Alexa replied that she could easily find out. After all, they are all aristocrats, about 20 to 30 years old like Wilhelm. The Marcus of Belford, for example, Alexa said, and saw how his face became distorted after these times. I'm sure he's as great an ally to you as I am. So what will you do now? Will you continue to be stubborn until I touch your horse? Or will you agree and help that woman find me faster? Alexa asked. Avan Karen said that he understood everything and would convey her request. Louis gave Alexa an antique medallion and said that through it he would tell her the time and place of classes. He also asked her to attend Count Ergen's classes. As she left, Alexa said to the Prime Minister, Can I warn you? You want a new ruler, a magnificent king. A king who will always listen to you. But don't forget, whoever takes this place, you will remain only a royal subordinate.
After their meeting, nothing interesting happened to Alexa for a long time. However, Felipe himself was in full swing with life. After what happened at the debate, Lady Manuela's relatives were evicted from the country for a crime against a member of the royal family. And despite their close relationship with the king, they did not receive forgiveness. But this is not the first ruthless decision for Rafael III. The daughter of his concubine Camilla was suspected of belonging to demons, but he quickly sent all those who spread rumors to the guillotine. This was a warning to everyone else that neither his second concubine nor his daughter should be discussed in a negative way in society. And this time, because of the exile of Manuela's entire family, dirty rumors spread in society. And Belcalan asked Alexa if she wanted to tell him anything. The girl asked what exactly it was about. And the Duke said that it would be enough if she began with what had been happening to her lately. Alexa knew that he purposefully asked her this question, since he had long noticed some changes in her. I need to be careful, she decided. I know he trusts me and I trust him too, but I don't know where to start. A promise to my uncle, an agreement with the minister, my transfer to someone else's body. How to tell about all this? It's better not to rush yet, it's not time yet. I don't want him to worry, the girl thought, and replied that everything was fine. But Belkalan asked Alexa not to evade the answer and not to pretend that everything was fine. Then Alexa clung to him and said that she was afraid to tell. I'm not a wordy person, but neither are you. You always have many secrets, didn't you say that we are alike? The Duke asked Alexa. I'll never leave you, so please don't think that way about me. One word of yours or your look means the whole world to me, Belkalan admitted. The girl was happy with him, so she decided to tell him everything but asked him to promise her that after hearing the truth, he would not hate her. Alexa cupped his face with her hands, then walked away a little and said, Belkalan, in fact, I am not at all the same person you know. I'm not Alexa. After these words, everything began to flow, like sand flowing through her fingers and she could no longer stop. I am not from this world. I lost my life in an accident. And when I opened my eyes again, I realized that I was in the body of a monster. I didn't even know anyone in the world I found myself in. I'm Lee Hanbeal from another world. I didn't even know who I was, but my body was covered with fur and people around me called me a monster. Only later did I hear my name, Alexa, and immediately hated it. But I couldn't leave everything as it was. It was a miraculously obtained second life, a chance that cannot be missed. After all, a new life cannot be more terrible than the life of Lee Hanbiel. Therefore, no matter how difficult it turned out to be, I decided to accept my situation and move forward. I did what she couldn't, and this is only my merit, she admitted. And the fact that Lee Hanbiel became Alexa is known to Mr. Avankaran. He knows why I'm here. He knows how and why I became Alexa. He also said that I needed to start a rebellion as a future contender for the throne. And I agreed. He did not express the threat directly, but in case of refusal. Felkalan, even though I'm Alexa now, if the real one wants her body back, then I'll have to give it back to her. But I really can't give up on you, she said. Alexa cried and said that she didn't care about others, but not about him. And she admitted that she didn't know how to tell him the truth, since it was such a heavy burden. The girl apologized for being silent for so long and admitted that she survived it all only thanks to him. She hugged him and told him that she would understand if he disliked her. But the Duke apologized to her for the fact that his curiosity caused her mental suffering. He kissed her forehead and said that he didn't want her to cry. The princess was surprised by this reaction and asked, Have you not realized my words? I'm not Alexa, but I want to take her place. Belkalon pressed her to himself and said, It doesn't matter anymore. The girl asked if she didn't disgust him because she was hiding behind the mask of a stranger and wanted to take his life. Felkalon replied that he had neither contempt nor disgust for her, and he admitted that he was simply so happy that he could not let her go. Then she called herself selfish and greedy, ready to do anything in order not to lose what she had already achieved. The Duke replied that this did not frighten him at all. Even if you have to give up the real Alexa, I will always be there. Just like you stayed by my side, I'm never ready to lose you, Belkalon said. Alexa thanked the guy for his support and hugged him. I told the whole truth, but you are still here. I was worried that you would leave right away. Now the most terrible moment in my life is behind me. And the fact that I'm still here with you seems somewhat unreal, the princess admitted. I can imagine how scared and hurt you were until this moment. I'm really sorry. 
Belcalon said. The butler entered and informed the duke that a carriage had been sent for the princess from the Ergen estate. If you're late, I'll make you write the correct answers until your hand falls off, she remembered the teacher's words. God, did I really forget that there's class today? The Duke of Belcalon asked the butler to tell the coachman that the princess would be coming down. The girl apologized because it was time for her to leave. She wanted to stay in his arms a little longer. Belcalon said he enjoys everything about her, even her teaching. After such pleasant words, Alexa said, Okay, now I'm calm and ready to move on. Princess Alexa entered the royal library and was curious why the class would be held here. She thought that the teacher would already be here, but she was the only one in the library. The princess was surprised that the teacher allowed himself to be so late. Alexa took the book and began to read, when suddenly he approached her. Her ex-fiancé, Marquis Marcus Bedford. He said she didn't come on time, so he went out to get her. Alexa asked if the meeting was in the library. The guy replied that it was true, but not entirely. Everyone gathered on the second floor in the lecture hall. He added that she was 30 minutes late and asked her to follow him. When Alexa entered the office, Sir Evan Karen said that he was already starting to worry that something had happened to her. The girl replied that she was a little confused about the meeting place. Princess Alexa asked the Prime Minister what the Marquis of Bedford was doing here. Oh, I didn't warn you, Your Highness. Now you will attend classes together, Lewis replied. Don't be so surprised. When there is a competitor nearby, rivalry arises. You both put in more effort and learn better, the mentor explained to her. I also believe, Princess, that the only truly worthy opponent for you is Mr. Belford. Motivation is best manifested in the struggle on equal terms. I'm sure it will be useful for both of you. You are great partners for each other, Lewis added. Then I hope for healthy competition, Alexa told Belford. Why do you think he hates you? Killian asked his cousin over tea. Alexa said that she and him quarrel all the time. Killian assumed that in this way he was simply showing his interest in her. Alexa replied that this was nonsense. Then the guy said that he knew Marcus, and he was quite normal with others. Therefore, he assumed that Belford was attracting her attention. But Alexa said that he behaved this way even when they were still engaged. But since now you are nobody to each other, why does he do this, do you think? Asked the cousin. The girl replied that she herself did not understand and did not even have time to ask him. She admitted to Killian that she could only discuss this with him and Belcalon. What? What did you tell your boyfriend about this? Are you crazy? The guy was surprised. Of course, you must be honest with each other. But you definitely can't share something like this. The Duke is a very reserved man and therefore did not show his concern to you. But can you imagine how unpleasant it will be for him that you will constantly see a guy who is definitely flirting with you and who most likely likes you? Said Killian. Alexa replied that the Marquise of Bedford was to blame for everything. Then Killian said, if you think he hates you, then just make him really hate you. After another lesson with Louis Avoncran, the mentor asked Marcus to accompany Princess Alexa and said goodbye to them. The girl thought that she herself could get to the castle. The Marquis approached her and asked why she was distracted during class. Alexa replied, I listened quite carefully. Where did you get the idea? Are you still offended by my joke? I didn't know that such things could affect your state of mind, Princess Alexa told him. She decided that if she couldn't finish him with one blow, she would attack slowly with small attacks. Belford said her appearance changes, but she is still the same. He added that she never admits her mistakes. Alexa admitted that she crossed the line with her joke, but only because he provoked her. The Marquis wanted to say something, but she interrupted him and told him to address her properly and added that he always forgets that her title is higher. I knew she hated me, but why does she always have such a sad face? Does she really regret that our relationship ended? Thought the Marquise of Bedford. As they rode in the carriage, the Marquise told Alexa that she should sit straighter, and such a body position goes against feminine etiquette. Alexa replied that she did not need to observe feminine etiquette in front of him, since they were no longer engaged. But before that, you were constantly running after me, the guy said. That was the past, Alexa, you can forget these times. I think we better end this pointless conversation, she replied. She didn't like his presence. Suddenly, the girl noticed her lover from the window of the carriage and screamed to stop the carriage. The Marquis asked what she was doing. Alexa replied that she needed to go out. 
Belford said he promised his mentor that he would escort her straight to the palace, and he asked if she didn't understand that it was too dangerous on the streets. Alexa replied that she did not need an escort, and if something happens, she will take responsibility herself and will be able to protect herself. You just saw someone through the window and you want to go out right in the middle of the market? You, as usual, do what you want without understanding the situation, the guy said. Maybe so. Aren't you the same? You just don't want to be alone. This is a dangerous place. And what could happen to the monster? Asked the princess. I know perfectly well who you take me for. And you hate me for the same reason. I'll go. Alexa said, got out of the carriage and disappeared into the crowd. Alexa caught up with Belkalon, hugged him and said that she saw him on the way to the palace. He was surprised to see her here, in the market, alone. You promised not to appear in public places alone. The guy said. The princess replied that he was next to her, which means she was not alone. And she added that they began to see each other so rarely that she wanted to please him. Belkalon replied that he could always come to her if she missed her. But why are you here at this time? Is the lesson with Mr. Avancuron over? The guy asked. Alexa said that she was annoyed by the Marquis, who was also asked to accompany her. So are you together with the Marquise? Asked the Duke and clenched his hands into fists. The girl remembered what Killian told her, and added that it was Mr. Avancaran's request. So you spend so much time together, the Duke said upset. I ran away from him as soon as I saw you, admitted the princess. Felcalon bought the girl ice cream, and while Alexa was eating it, the Duke kissed her lips. He told her that it was a very sweet kiss, and she just melted. He's never looked at me like that before. I didn't look like myself. Alexa recalled that kiss while sitting at a lecture by Louis Avancron. The mentor interrupted her memories and reprimanded her for not seeming to be here. The girl said she was focused, but she wasn't. She remembered that kiss again and again. For some reason, Belkalon was so active, although he had previously robbed her of a lot of attention. Is this really the jealousy Killian was talking about? But how can he be so sweet while being jealous of me? The princess thought. After the lesson ended, Louis again insisted that the Marquis of Bedford escort Princess Alexa. She told her mentor that she would go herself. He asked if she had anything to do. Alexa replied that she was going to a pottery workshop where they were making dishes for the palace. I see that you have seriously prepared for the arrival of the delegation. But then the Marquise all the more should be present there. The workshop is located almost on the edge of the market. It's dangerous for you to go there alone, said the Prime Minister. Alexa said if he was worried, he could send the knights with her. Louis Avancron said that one marquis is not as conspicuous as a troop of knights. You are of course right, but you forget. I am Alexa, a monster, the captain of our army. How can I be in danger? Asked the princess. But she herself did not understand why he was trying so hard to bring her to Bedford. I know very well how strong you are, but I really don't want you to move around alone. Safety comes first for a member of the royal family. The Prime Minister answered her. Alexa went to the window and saw Belkalon sitting on a white horse. She said goodbye to everyone, ran to him, and threw herself into his arms. You surprised me so much with your arrival. Did something happen? The girl asked. I just wanted to take you to the workshop, the Duke replied. I mentioned this, but I didn't think that you would want to accompany me. The princess answered him and greeted his horse, Kurodo. They galloped away and the Marquis looked at them from the window. Unexpectedly, right? I've never seen a princess like this before, Louis said as he approached Belford. So this is the reason for such a dramatic transformation of the monster into a beautiful lady. How did it happen that the hero who changed the princess was not you? Louis asked Marcus. Since when did she start acting like a completely different person? Since how has her appearance changed? No, even then. It wasn't just her appearance that changed. The Marquis of Bedford thought about this. How could you be tired already? How are you even going to pass the physical training exam? He remembered these words well. Her broadly smiling face came as a real shock to him then. This memory remained forever in his head and became proof of Alexa's changes. For him, this memory seemed to stand still in time. It was from then on that he realized that her name had settled in his heart again. I like everything. But I wanted something special for the delegation's arrival, Princess Alexa told Archduke Belkalon. He noticed that her face had turned red. The girl said that this was due to the high temperature from the pottery kilns. 
Then the Duke invited her to go outside and went away to buy her cold water. He was so caring and attentive to detail. Alexa regretted that no one knew this side of Archduke Belcalon. Suddenly, the girl felt the gaze of a red-haired woman on her. She had been looking at the princess for a long time. Then she got into the carriage with the Marquis of Belford, and they left. The carriage bore the coat of arms of the Avancarona family. Alexa became very interested in what kind of relationship this woman had with the Marquis of Bedford and the Prime Minister. Closer or just another puppet in his game? Considering the Marquise's accompaniment, she was definitely an unusual person. Alexa understood that. The Duke brought her water. On the day of the delegation's visit in the Iris Palace, Alexa asked the maid if she had prepared everything according to her order. Custom candles and ceramics, special carpets for the ambassadors. The maid replied that everything was ready. Then Princess Alexa praised her and said that it was time to go into the hall, because the guests had already gathered. When Princess Alexa Dewhite was announced, everyone admired her beauty and discussed it among themselves. The king asked if she was sure that everything was ready for the meeting of the ambassadors. Alexa apologized to her father for her slowness, explaining that she wanted to do everything perfectly. And she added that everything is ready now. His majesty said that she could now take her place. Previously, her father would have yelled at her, but now he can no longer do it so freely. When the delegation arrived, so many people gathered in the hall, including the one Alexa least wanted to see, Belford. She wondered what was wrong with him, Ariel. She heard that after their engagement was called off, her relationship with Ariel gradually faded away. Then, Alexa caught herself thinking that she needed to find Belkalon. When she noticed him, their eyes met and he smiled at her. The king greeted everyone and announced, Today we have all gathered to welcome our dear guests. Alexa noticed that Belford was getting too close to Belkalon. It seemed to her that Bell, as she affectionately called him, did not like this very much. She hoped she was just imagining it. Will I be able to hold this reception without problems? Princess Alexa, who stood next to her sister, the first Princess Ariel, was spinning in her head. The king solemnly welcomed the delegation from Ophelia. Count Eblin Sazen greeted His Majesty King Felipe Raphael III. His Majesty remembered the long journey they had to travel. The count replied that he hoped that this meeting would help improve relations between Felipe and Aphil. Although our empire, of course, needs to develop relations with many other countries, therefore we cannot remove the focus only on Felipe. I think we shouldn't have sent our delegation to you at all, said Count Sazun. These words caused a storm of indignation among the invited guests from Felipe. Princess Alexa understood that if they failed to please them, they would immediately hand over everything to the emperor. But they behaved too ignorantly for diplomats, and the local nobility clearly didn't like it anymore. Given their defiant behavior, Raphael definitely understands that this is all just a provocation, Alexa thought. Among this ignorant crowd, she noticed one person who emanated a completely different atmosphere. This is Father Gabriel. He came with us. He is from the Vatican, said the Count. His Majesty asked why they brought the Father here from the Vatican. We want to glorify the blessing of Demeter everywhere, Count Eblin Sazen answered proudly. If my memory serves me right, then your country is one of those few that has not yet received the great blessing of the goddess. Therefore, he showed mercy and came in person, said the Count. Maybe it's because you yourself captured all the temples of Demeter in these parts. Do they really want to show Ephil's influence on the whole world? thought Princess Alexa. Now she understood how complex their interlocutors were. King Raphael thanked the delegation for their presence and wished them to enjoy their stay in Felipe. When Princess Alexa was sitting in her room and the maid was combing her hair before going to bed, Lily came running and told her that the members of the delegation were unhappy with their rooms. They called them small and tasteless and asked for other rooms, and the maid Jen stayed with them and tries to convince them. Alexa said that she would now sort everything out herself, and they went to the delegation. There she heard Count Sazen shouting, I'm not going to listen to anything. It's a shame. Trying to place a delegation from a great country in such a place. You must receive us with all honors, and you give us your most terrible chambers in the castle. What kind of diplomatic relations can we even talk about then? This is a violation of our rights. It seems that your delegation doesn't like something? Asked the princess. Princess Alexa? Count Eblin Sazen asked in surprise. Alexa introduced herself to the count. 
Alexandra de Pelagian de Vite, the princess responsible for your reception. Is Alexa a monster? he asked. The monster you imagined is me, that's right, answered the princess. Princess, but why do you look like that? Where is your fur? asked the count. Apparently you don't know that my curse has disappeared. I heard that you don't like your rooms. Alexa got to the point. The count replied that it was just a hard day and he needed to get rid of stress. But then he remembered that he couldn't show himself to be so flexible. And he added that they got this stress after seeing these rooms. We are guests of honor. So why do we have to huddle in such small rooms? We're not going to stop here, change our rooms, the count demanded. Well, we couldn't meet your expectations. This is truly a terrible mistake, said the princess. The count said that this was not a complaint against her, but a mistake made by the maids and we would just ask them. But the princess objected. This is all my fault and mistake. Because everything you see around you was chosen and prepared by me personally, she said and broke the vase using magic, touching it with her finger. I chose everything to my taste, but it doesn't fit at all. Alexa screamed and tore the bed linen. Then she took the sword and cut the bed in half. The ambassadors asked her to calm down, but Alexa said, and how dare I think that our guests could be in such rooms? That's definitely not possible. Pack your things and I will move you to my castle Iris, Princess Alexa finally said. But the guests, as one, shouted that they would stay here. Alexa asked how they would stay in these terrible rooms, since all the maids were now busy cleaning the reception hall, to which the count replied that they would clean everything up themselves. The princess asked if they were ashamed to be instead of maids. They replied that cleaning was a good thing. The girl was pleased that she had achieved her goal and said goodbye to them before the banquet. At the banquet, everyone continually admired her beauty and how wonderfully she organized everything. Does anyone else really see a monster in this man? The princess heard. They called her unique, but the girl in Alexa's body didn't like their relationship then or now. Previously, people would talk sweetly in front of her and gossip behind her back. They once called her a terrible monster, but now they consider her the great princess of this state. You have such a dissatisfied face, Mr. Avoncaron told her. Everywhere they talk only about you, it seems that you really make a strong impression on those around you, said her mentor. Alexa thanked him for the compliment. Louis suggested that the princess relax a little, since she now has a very stern expression on her face. The girl did not understand what he was talking about. Nothing makes you feel more uncomfortable than a homeowner who doesn't smile. In society, the princess must try on different masks, as well as those around her, said Louis. But can I bear it? asked Princess Alexa. Louis replied that it doesn't matter whether she can or not. If people see your cold gaze, then this only gives them a new reason for gossip. Smile if you don't want to get caught. This is the road you will have to follow in the future, added her mentor, the Prime Minister, and took his leave. Alexa took his advice. She understood that he was right and this was necessary for the sake of victory. To protect those who are dear to me and to be close to them, she thought. Did you like the banquet, Princess Alexa? The girl asked her. Alexa answered her, You look beautiful, Lady Elizabeth. She decided that she would not show her weaknesses to anyone. The princess left the stuffy hall and walked along the corridor, thinking that this communication had really benefited her. She satisfied the interest of the nobility in her person and dealt with the delegation. So overall, she was pleased with herself. How suddenly from one of the rooms she heard her maid scream, I said I don't want to. Don't you want to become a noblewoman? The guy shouted. The girl screamed that she didn't want to. And he said that if she continued to behave like this, he would have to take action. Princess Alexa burst into their room and saw one of the representatives of the delegation holding the maid's hands. Don't you think you overdid it? She asked him. Maid Lily approached Count Sazen at the banquet and told him that Princess Alexa was right now asking the entire delegation to come to her, and it was urgent. As they walked along the corridor, the Count wondered what gift the princess had prepared for them to make amends for those terrible rooms. As soon as the Count opened the door to the room, he saw his colleague there, sitting on the floor in only his shorts. Baron Shen, what's wrong with you? He asked in surprise. You have arrived, Alexa said with a smile. Princess Alexa, what's going on? How can you do this to an innocent person? 
If the emperor finds out about this, you will be in trouble, the count shouted. If he finds out, he will be angry with you, you understand, said the princess. A representative of the delegation tried to defile a maid of the royal palace. How do you think the emperor will react to this when he learns about your wrongdoing? I am sure that King Felipe will not turn a blind eye to the instigators of the international scandal. And if this matter is discussed at the highest level between the two countries, then I will act as a direct witness, you understand that? Alexa continued. I'm sure it's just an accident. The Baron drank a little too much, that's all, said the Count. Yeah, so the members of the delegation are allowed to justify their inappropriate behavior by drinking? Asked the Princess. I really don't think we can resolve this peacefully, because I'm not a drunkard like Baron Shen. Therefore, let's discuss how we can find a way out of this situation, said the Princess. The Baron's younger sister is His Majesty's concubine. Everything needs to be settled before he is sent to Felipe Prison, Count Eblin Sazoon worried. If you have no ideas, then I'll just take the case to the International Court, said Princess Alexa. The Count asked why the Baron didn't just ask the maid for forgiveness. Then Alexa showed him a paper on which a memorandum was written, prohibiting delegates from the Empire from committing any crimes in Felipe's territory. As I already said, I will not turn a blind eye to this incident, so sign this memorandum, Princess Alexa demanded. The Count asked what would happen if they refused. Alexa replied that the Baron would go to prison for harassment under Felipe's law, and she added that if he wants to maintain peace between countries, then he had better sign this document. When the ambassadors signed the memorandum, Alexa said that now for this offense, they would only get off with a fine. They were surprised at this turn of events. And the princess asked if they hadn't noticed this clause in the contract and added, Of course you have to pay for misdeeds with money. The ambassadors believed that they had been robbed. You can take the baron. I don't have extra time to communicate with criminals anyway. Well, it's good for you to spend the rest of the banquet, said the princess, and left them in the room. It ended just as I thought it would. Besides, the priest who was with them is not here. There's definitely something wrong with this person. Alexa thought as she walked down the corridor. Why did you come here pretending to be a priest, Abraxas? Belkalon asked the guy. I wanted to see your surprised face, he answered his brother. Belkalon replied that he did not have time to play and asked why he was in Felipe. Are you afraid that I will touch your woman? Asked Abraxas. The duke was very angry, and the priest said that it was surprising that he fell for a human girl. Belkalon warned his brother that you did not touch Alexa. I just came here to warn you about your woman. The time will soon come when you will need to make a choice. There's a reason your father didn't kill you. I hope you have fully enjoyed your fun life and are ready to come back to me. Maybe your blood is mixed with dirty human, but the demon blood in you is very strong. Very soon the time will come when you will need to return to your noble demonic family. Together we can dominate the entire continent, said Abraxas and extended his hand to Belkalon. But the duke replied that it was time for him and turned to leave. I have no desire to become part of your plan, Belkalon said goodbye. Abraxas replied that he understood his lost feelings. However, if you need to remove this woman, I know a way, so contact me, he added. Belkalon turned around and sent a stream of magic straight towards Abraxas's neck. Well, well, you weren't going to kill the last representative of your kind, were you? The guy asked. Don't think that I will always listen to your nonsense, Belkalon said and hurt his brother's face. The duke said that it was a warning and left, and Abraxas said after him that in the end he would still come running to him, because he will not be able to live either among people or among demons. Stupid half-breed. To get him, I need that monster woman, the guy decided. Princess Alexa, the servants told me that you forced the delegation to sign a memorandum for their misconduct, said the Marquis of Bedford, catching up with Alexa on the street. Alexa replied that it was so, because you need to be responsible for your actions. Marcus asked why she did this, because they would hand everything over to the emperor. And if the emperor doesn't like what he hears, then Felipe's entire kingdom will suffer because of her. Alexa wanted to leave, but the Marquis grabbed her hand. Don't resort to violence. Your every word as a representative of the royal family and every action must be careful, Belford continued, holding her hand. How can you say that after what happened? Alexa asked. They want to attract more attention than the entire royal family just because they are imperial nobles. That's why they didn't give a damn about what they did with the maid. She was in great danger and you tell me that I should have turned a blind eye to it? 
This means that you are as cruel a person as the delegates. I'm not a person like you. I will not endure all this just for the sake of preserving an imaginary peace, the princess told him. Marquis of Bedford asked if you think about the relationship between Felipe and Ophiel, but Alexa replied that he would not be able to influence her with his standards of fairness. When leaving, the princess asked him to refrain from commenting on the measures taken by the royal family. Then the Marquis shouted with all his might, Princess! Alexa stopped. We really can't go back to the way things were before? When you lived the way you wanted? When no one knew you and you didn't want to know anyone? Can't we return this? Such reckless actions can harm you. The more unnecessary attention you attract to yourself, the fewer supporters you have. And your position will become more precarious. So please don't put yourself at risk. Don't bring danger on yourself, said Marcus, and hugged Alexa's shoulders. Hearing about the danger, Alexa thought about being wary of Wilhelm, who would want to protect the throne with all his might. She also wondered what the Marquis had to say about this. The princess asked him why he was suddenly giving her such advice. Marcus replied that he was worried. She wondered what exactly was bothering him. The fact that she got into their plans with the mentor, or he is worried about her safety. And Alexa said that it was not his place to worry about her for no reason. The guy asked what really he couldn't even do that. Suddenly, Alexa noticed Belkalon approaching them. She said goodbye to the Marquise and hugged her lover. Alexa asked Belkalon where he was. After all, he was not at the banquet and she was very worried. The guy replied that he had personal matters and needed to sort it out. The girl asked him to go with her to a quiet place to talk. Belkalon hugged Alexa and kissed her head. Belford watched them without leaving. What did you talk about with the Marquise? asked the Duke. Alexa replied that he condemned her for punishing the delegation, which behaved inappropriately from the very beginning. The Marquis did not like my behavior. It seemed to him that I did not think about international relations. You know, I can't turn a blind eye to injustice, she said. Felkelin said that he was not so interested in the topic of their conversation as the fact that lately she had become very close to the Marquis. Alexa replied that they were just attending classes together. The Duke sat down on his knees in front of the girl and said that he had something for her. He took a beautiful gold pendant from his pocket and put it around the princess's neck. Alexa was delighted she had never seen such a beautiful pattern. Belkalin said that this is the treasure of the Istar family. So beautiful. I will always wear it, Belk, said Alexa and tenderly hugged her lover and he closed his eyes and smiled. What should we do, Alexa? I really want you to see the Marquis as little as possible the guy said. Of course I will do whatever you want, she replied. Alexa could not think that this conversation would help her so much, but the Marquise's words. Partly, she agreed with him. The princess asked the Duke to always be there. When he is not next to her, every now and then some strange people appear near her. Belkalin promised that he would always be with her, protecting her from others. Jen, I have a favor to ask. You need to find in the capital one aristocrat with red hair and eyes. Perhaps this woman is close to the aristocrats, said Alexa. The maid said that it would not be difficult to find a woman with such appearance. Alexa knew that this woman was a special person to Avancaran. After all, she was accompanied by the Marquis of Belford. She didn't know yet what kind of relationship they were in. But once she finds out, she can use it to her advantage and take a dominant position in this confrontation. By the way, how is Ariel? After the banquet with the ambassadors, I didn't hear anything about her, Princess Alexa asked the maid. And she answered, It seems that she is sick. She was so pale. Alexa remembered how after the banquet, Ariel disappeared without even saying goodbye. And this doesn't look like her at all. The maid added that the princess did not go out anywhere after that day. She asked the maids, but they also don't know anything. So much so that it's even scary to think how bad she is. Then Alexa asked if maybe she should give her something. The princess told the maid how Ariel visited her with cookies. When Lily heard about the cookies, she said that in Lila's castle, they don't make desserts from flour. This surprised Alexa very much. But Lily said that Ariel hated just the smell of flour. But she always treated her to various desserts. And at the same time, she even hated the smell of them? Now Alexa was wondering why Ariel was doing this for her. And at the same time, she did not want to find out the truth. She simply didn't have time for another tangled tangle. The maid told her that it would be better to tell Princess Ariel. But Alexa listened to everything. Lily said that she needed to rest after hard days. 
Alexa decided to take a walk in the fresh air and went out into the garden. Princess Alexa, it's a great honor for me to meet you, the guy said. It was Priest Gabriel from the delegation. He said he never had a chance to formally introduce himself to her. The girl said that she was glad to meet him and asked if he liked their garden. The guy replied that he was as beautiful as her. The princess replied that she does not even take care of this garden, so there is no need to talk about her like that. Rather, he resembles you more, Holy Father, said the princess. Gabriel replied that he was only a servant of the goddess, so he did not need high titles. Alexa mentioned that he personally receives the love of the goddess, so he should not downplay his merits. To this, the guy said that she also receives her love in the form of magic. The princess asked how he knew about this. Even though this is not holy power, it is also a small gift from above. Isn't this power to attract others? He asked. Alexa immediately understood what he was leading to and said that it was time for her to leave. Then, the priest asked permission to give her a parting blessing. Gabriel put his hand to her head and said, May Demerta bless Alexa de Pelagion de Vite. The blessing of the goddess will always be with you. The girl really didn't like the energy that came from his hand during the blessing. It was as if there was something very heavy in his hands. The princess said goodbye and left, and the guy stood and blood flowed from his hand onto the ground. Are you really ready to do this to me because of a man, Belkalon? said Abraxas. What a bastard. I didn't think you would dare to get into my hunt. I already wanted to take all her power, but I didn't know that you would do this and protect her with your power in the medallion. It is amazing. I didn't think you were so in love with her. Well, I'll have to speed up my hunt. If you really are the key to the revival of demons, I won't let you go to waste, he thought. Princess Alexa was preparing for a hunt, and she was wondering why the ambassadors suddenly wanted to go hunting. After all, due to the invasion of monsters last time, the forest is now not the best place for hunting. Eight of Felipe's aristocrats will take part, including the Archduke Belcalon and the Marquis of Belford. Alexa was glad that Belk was nearby, but she was worried about Marcus's presence. The commander informed everyone that there was a royal market on the way to the hunting grounds. It is the largest in the capital, and they will be able to stay there. He announced that those who would ride in the carriage had already taken their seats. Therefore, riders can start moving. Alexa looked for Belkalon while riding her horse. Count Sazen asked why she kept looking back. She told the count that he had nothing to worry about. When she noticed the duke, she called him to her, but he thanked the princess for the invitation and refused. She once again invited him to ride next to her to the hunting grounds, but he again politely refused. Alexa understood that he was worried about the views of other people. She knew that in public places they had to be close to each other. Then the Marquis of Bedford approached her and said, Princess, please order me to personally take care of Count Sazen. Alexa asked why he thought she should be the one giving such orders. The mentor said that I should give you my support, he replied. The ambassadors don't know much about you. Therefore, we need to show them how many people in Felipe are on your side, the guy continued, which surprised Alexa. After all, the hunt begins first of all for a wild animal that wanders around the surrounding area on its own, added the Marquise. Alexa didn't like having him around, but she knew he was right. Therefore, she said she agreed, and meanwhile they arrived at the market. This is Felipe's best market. There are many things here that are unfamiliar to foreigners, so you can always find something interesting here, the commander said. Alexa called the duke again and invited him to take a walk around the market. He again replied that it was not worth it. Belford told her that he clearly didn't want that. But Princess Alexa answered him. After me, he is the next most noble person here, and if he is walking at the end of the procession, then it would be polite to walk next to him. The girl stood next to the duke, and Belford covered his face with his hands. Marcus wondered how many aristocrats had built a wall between her and themselves because of her nickname, Monster. And because of her close relationship with the demon, the people remaining on her side will abandon her. Therefore, in order to protect herself and her place, she needs to stay away from him. When they were alone, Belkalon told Alexa that she shouldn't do that. All eyes are on them and she shouldn't spend time with him. Belk, don't worry about it. You worry about me and I in turn worry about you. But more than anything, I want to spend time with you, she said. Princess, what are you doing? Asked the Marquis of Bedford. The girl replied that she was talking with the Grand Duke. 
The Marquis replied that now it was more important to pay attention to the ambassadors from Ephel. Alexa told the Marquis that he was insulting the Grand Duke. Belford said he didn't care about her personal life, but they had to take care of the delegation now. Think how your relationship with the Duke will affect your future plans, the Marquis reminded her. Alexa stopped the indignant Belcalon, saying that she would talk to him herself. Marquis of Bedford, it seems you don't understand. The throne is not in the first place for me. My plans are very different from yours and Avancaron. Even if you dream of deciding who will take the next throne, I refuse to take part in this, the princess said decisively. She added that she herself will decide what kind of people will be next to her. Because unlike him, she does not depend on the opinions of others, and he should not blindly follow other people's judgments. The princess took the duke's hand and they disappeared into the crowd of the market. And Belford understood that her words were so sincere that they instantly destroyed the boundaries of his reality. When everyone reached the forest, the commander announced that Felipe's hunting grounds were located here, and he invited everyone to break into groups. Count Eblen Sazen asked Princess Alexa to take him and his boyfriend Philip with her, so that they would not get lost in an unfamiliar area. The guy on the horse galloped forward and shouted that the horse was not listening to him. Princess Alexa had to gallop after him. Be here, I will find him, she said to the count. When Alexa found the guy, he was sitting on the ground without a horse and rubbing his wrist. How should I best address you, your highness? Alexa asked the guy. At this time, Belcalon tied Count Sazen's neck with magic and said, I have a feeling that it was you and Mr. Philip who came up with this plan. I hope you understand what your lies can lead to. This is the last warning. I advise you not to approach the princess anymore, said Belcalon. When the duke rode off on his horse, the count thought that all this time, they should have been afraid of the Archduke Belcalon, and not the princess. How did you know? The guy asked Princess Alexa. She replied that she began to suspect something when the count tried to do all the dirty work for him. And when the count asked to escort you, he addressed you several times as his highness. But this is not the most important thing now, don't you agree? If we stay here too long, rumors will begin to circulate. So if you want to tell me something, say it now, Princess Alexa told Prince Philip. The princess asked why he staged this performance. The Ethel Empire offers refuge to the second princess of the kingdom, Felipe, said the prince. The princess was surprised, and then the guy continued. My elder brother, the crown prince, asked me to tell you that we offer you political asylum. Think for yourself. Such a small country as Felipe will be able to maintain its position only thanks to you, right? But are you getting the recognition you deserve? asked the prince. Even at the banquet, some aristocrats spoke ill of you. Do they consider you a heroine? Are you receiving the love and respect you deserve? My brother promised to give you the position of duchess, one of the five highest titles in the empire if you go to Eiffel, added Prince Philip. Do you want a member of the royal family to betray his homeland for the sake of a title? asked the princess. Philip asked if she was not under the king's constant control. Alexa realized that the prince had studied the situation in her family before his arrival. Although he seems so harmless, it's not for nothing that he is the prince of his empire. Ephil will help you shine. If you come with us, your life will be completely different, said the prince and kissed her hand. Alexa said that was a pretty outrageous request. The prince said he understood that she was confused. Therefore, if she makes up her mind, she can inform one of the delegation. Alexa replied that she would not run for the title, even if she left the country. Phil Kalan galloped after Alexa. The girl surprised him. The duke asked the princess if she was injured. She replied that she was fine, but Mr. Philip had injured his wrist. Belcalon said that it did not matter and asked her to return immediately, since everyone had been waiting for them for a long time. Alexa thought he was angry at her and Philip. When they returned, the commander informed everyone that it was time to return to the castle. Alexa asked Belcalon what happened and why he was angry. He replied that everything was fine and it was not worth her attention. Then Alexa said that she didn't want to spoil her mood anymore and would tell everything when she calmed down. Belkalin began to persuade her to talk to him and offered what she wanted. If you are upset, then you can take a walk or go to the market as you wanted. Just tell me and I will do whatever you want, the Duke continued. Princess Alexa replied that she didn't care anymore and he was late with his proposal. What can I do so that you don't get angry? The guy asked. The girl reminded him that she would not like to hide their relationship. If this is what you want, then I agree, 
he replied. Since when did the princess and the Grand Duke become so inseparable? They are really very friendly. Are they really in a relationship? They said around the Marquis, which made him very angry. Look, Sazun, I didn't know they were so close, Prince Philip said to the Count. Given the reaction of Felipe's other aristocrats, it seems that they were not aware either, Sazun replied. The prince said that perhaps this would work to their advantage, since they will be able to use both the demon and the monster at once. And he added that his brother would definitely like this idea. Eyes and voice full of love, just like in my memories. The care she shows remains the same. The only thing that has changed is he, the duke, the marquis said sadly. Belford, love me. Can you look at me and not at others? I love you, Belford recalled. He thought that he shouldn't have rejected her feelings then. Rumors about the relationship between the princess and the Grand Duke continue to spread. While their relationship is only at an early stage, so there are many assumptions in society. Louis read, Princess, how can you do this? Why are you flaunting your relationship with the Grand Duke? The Prime Minister asked indignantly. It seems like you were imagining something. Our contact obliges me to listen to your lessons and nothing more. Therefore, you should not interfere in other people's affairs, Alexa answered. Louis of Ancaron reminded her that Felipe needed her. To protect what they have and become better, they need to develop and show it to others. But Alexa replied that she did not need the kingdom and she was attending his classes as they agreed. And he won't get more from her. After the princess left, Louis thought, of course the power and status of the Grand Duke can help the princess. However, rumors about their relationship may turn against them. Avankaran decided that if Princess Alexa was not interested in the fate of her kingdom, then he should fix it. Huron, bring her, he ordered the butler. Alexa, walking down the corridor, met Marquis Belford. He said that he had a conversation with her. The girl replied that if he talks nonsense again, then it's better not to waste time. I just want to ask, if I had acted differently before, would we have been in a different relationship? Marquis Bedford asked Alexa. She thought there was no point in remembering this failed relationship, that Alexa is no longer there. If only he had been kinder then and could have accepted her like that. Perhaps Alexa's life would have been completely different. That's right, we would definitely have had a different relationship, the princess answered him. But she added that nothing can be changed. Alexa left and Marcus wished he could go back to the time when she tenderly called his name. The same as Belkalon's name now. And then they would be together. A few days later, Alexa arrived at Belkalon's palace where his butler Salovin prepared delicious desserts especially for her. She was happy here. Belkalon asked why they had not seen each other for so long. Alexa said that she was busy mainly answering questions about their relationship. Then the Duke showed the princess the paper. This is a marriage vow for our vassals to hold you. In the capital, people treat me with suspicion. But at the borders, people are not so wary, he said. Alexa didn't understand why they should support her. There were not only vassals from the border, but also the Dukes of Astara. Belkalon said that he would not allow her to lose her position because of him. But creating this document will only provoke the king to reject you, she shouted. The Duke said that she shouldn't worry. She could just say that she was happy and that would be enough for him. Alexa didn't understand why he would go that far. It seemed to her that he wanted to make sure that she could not leave and hold her in your arms, caring for her like a little child. Does he really want to make her his so badly? After Prince Ephil was discovered, Felipe's plan changed slightly. The imperial delegation continued to seek an audience at Iris's palace. They showed a desire to discuss government affairs. Since the reasons for refusal were gradually running out, Alexa decided to visit Count Ergen. While Alexa was playing chess with her cousin Killian, Count Ergen entered their room. Camilla, was I really greedy when I wanted to heal your wounds? If only I could forget about the desire for revenge and just enjoy their sincere smiles, the Count thought and Killian called him. Count Ergen turned to Princess Alexa. We talked to you about the business of using monster skin. Many knights are interested in this. The princess replied that she was glad about this, but it was better to continue to hide her involvement in this idea. After all, the king will want to get the rights to manage the business. Then the count told Alexa that he gave her share in gold bars and hid her in Camilla's mansion. He invited her to look at her mother's mansion. There were quite a lot of valuable things in the mansion, and all these treasures were her inheritance. It was unusual for her to feel such care from her mother. Then, 
Killian asked if she would now go to her lover. The girl replied that he was not in the capital now. He left for three days to check the borders. The cousin joked that he couldn't cope so quickly, so most likely he lied to her and went to his mistress. Alexa replied that it was only because of her strong love for her. The next morning, the maid woke up Princess Alexa and told her that gifts had been sent to her. This is a board game and books that are hard to find in Felipe. These gifts were from the Grand Duke of Belcolon. Alexa was happy that Belk was so caring. She did not part with the book and even went into the garden with it. There the priest Gabriel met her and asked her to give him some time. After the hunt, rumors began to circulate about your relationship with the Grand Duke, he said. Alexa was surprised that he was interested in this, but she told him that these were not mere rumors, but the truth. Then, he said that they urgently needed to talk. Did you know that the Duke is the last of the demonic blood? Asked Gabriel. Alexa replied that she knew about it. During this time, he was often judged for being a different species. Demonic forces have become active again recently, and most likely they are driven by him, the priest said. Princess Alexa answered him that this was his personal assumption, and Archduke Belkalan was doing everything for the good of their state. Princess, all the demons inside are made of darkness. They are filled with greed, anger, and cruelty. The Duke is ready to do anything for personal goals, but not for the sake of Felipe. But you know what scares me even more? That the Archduke, who thinks he is only half-demon, finds out that he is not a half-blood, but a full-fledged demon, he said. Alexa asked why he was so interested in the Archduke's origins. The priest replied that even the power of a half-breed is powerful enough to destroy everything in its path. And the power of a full-fledged demon will bring terrible consequences to people. Then Alexa asked why she wasn't that dangerous. After all, on the battlefield, they called her a monster of death. Gabriel replied that her power was more like sacred power. He asked where she got this necklace and admitted that the power in it was painful for him. The princess said that it was a gift from the duke. Then the priest asked why the duke would give her a necklace that could not be approached with sacred power. Abraxas thought that the girl fell for his words, and now she will become afraid of Belkalon. The princess will distance herself from him and he will not be able to survive it, and will become angry. Then it will be possible to find the abandoned princess and take her powers, and in this way it will be possible to restore some of the demons. Abraxas knew that he had succeeded in influencing her. The priest told the princess that the longer she was with the duke, the worse she would become. She will also be considered an accomplice of the demons. The girl listened to him with a sad face and then laughed in his face. Alexa said that she knew everything about the duke and he didn't surprise her with anything. The princess admitted that she considered him suspicious from the very beginning. And this necklace is designed to protect her from bad people. Why does it react this way to you? My assumptions now make sense. Perhaps you are behind everything, Alexa said, placing his hand on the pendant. Abraxas pulled his hand back. He decided that if he couldn't take her power, then he just needed to kill her right now. But at that moment, Belford approached them. Priest Gabriel said that they had already finished the conversation and advised her to listen to his advice as to the words of the goddess Demeter herself. The Marquis of Bedford approached the princess and said that she should be careful with this guy. After all, he knows what real priests look like, but something else is read in his gaze. Alexa replied that she would listen to his advice. The guy said that the mentor asked to take her to a ceramics shop for a banquet. The girl said that she could go there herself, but the guy insisted and said that this was an order from the prime minister. Alexa called the Marquis obedient and agreed to go with him to get dishes for the banquet. How you are going to put the princess on the throne and force her to return to a lonely life again, the guy said to the mentor. He remembered their conversation. Belford for me in serving the king, it is not the life of the monarch that is important, but his nature. Think about how people live under an incompetent ruler. Don't you love your country, Felipe? To make sure that the princess ascends to the throne, you must suppress all these immature feelings within you, said the prime minister. When they arrived at the pottery shop, the princess thanked the marquis and said that she would handle the rest herself. But he behaved somehow strangely. Belford took her hand and said, You can just come back if you don't want to. I'll put in a good word with the mentor. Alexa replied that meeting the delegation is not an easy task, and no one talks about working or not working based only on personal experiences. The guy once again invited her to leave. Then the princess said that he was behaving very strangely and asked him to tell him if something was bothering him. Then Belford let her go and apologized. The princess entered a ceramic shop. 
When she was looking at the service, that girl with red hair approached her. 